hi everybody. Hello and welcome. Um, my name is Sharna Lopez and I'm the director of the Integrated Arts Conservatory here at um, Orange County School of the Arts. It's a pleasure to have all of you with us this afternoon. You are in for a very exciting treat. Um, today's event is part of our fifth annual Master Artist Series. And this series brings acclaimed artists and industry professionals to OSHA to work with our talented students, building their skills and providing inspiration and guidance for their futures. This year, we've had an impressive list of visiting guest artists, including Academy Award-winning costume designer, Ruthie Carter, uh, the trailblazing ballerina, Misty Copeland, and Academy Award-winning screenwriter, Kevin Wilmot. We are deeply grateful to our sponsors, deeply grateful for supporting OSHA and helping to provide our students with unparalleled opportunities like these and for helping make today's experience possible. We would also like to extend a special welcome to our OSHA supporters and alumni who are here with us today. We are grateful for your support and we are glad to have you with us. Today, we have the pleasure of welcoming home a very special OSHA alumni family who have gone on to become celebrated filmmakers, actors, and stars of the film, The Fabulous Filipino Brothers, uh, which will debut at the South by Southwest Film Festival later this month. I hope you all had a chance to see the trailer in the waiting room while you were waiting. Um, Dante, Darian, and Dion Bosco are each acclaimed actors with extensive expertise in acting, producing, writing, directing, the list goes on and on and so much more. Their combined accolades include films such as Hook, my favorite, um, mm -hmm. Avatar, The Last Airbender. I know my students are all excited about that one. Um, Cesar Chavez, The Brady Bunch movie, Dahmer and The Head Thieves. That's just to name a few. Um, we're truly honored to have them with us today for an interactive career discussion. Students will be invited to ask questions throughout the duration of the masterclass. You can submit your questions in the chat function in the Zoom room. And uh, without further ado, please join me in welcoming Dante, Darian, and Dion Bosco. Thank you, gentlemen. How are you doing? Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you for having Yay. us. Thank you. So here we go. Thoughts swim around my mind. Thoughts swim around my mind. Now ask yourself. Who's this kid that stands before me? Hope he doesn't bore me. Quit. Stick him in another category. Well, he doesn't really fit in any. Brown like a copper penny, yet with Asiatic eyes. I see to my surprise. He's got a black nose. But on the real, I'm a Phil, Phil a Pino. Pino. To break it down further still, I will. Tell you I descend from an island where the natives run around nearly naked. Named Negritos. Translation. Little. Black. Men. Black as the shadows in the glorious sun. But then came a China man. Or maybe it was Japan. Who mixed in the Asiatic blood. Drip, drop, drip, rips my tribal. Here, Here comes, comes the, the Bible, Bible of a man from Spain. Spain who left me with a Spanish, Spanish name. name. From a little conquered island is from where I came. Confuse our question. Yet I wound up here where I found joy. Recognize I am a brown boy. In America. A place where you are judged by the color of your skin. Black. White. And here I am, standing on the land of another brown man. Now that's irony that I can see. Thoughts swim around my mind. You got to give me time on this. Thoughts swim around my mind. But our grandpa said, throw Just your line and, and fish. fish. What's up, you guys? We're the Bosco brothers. It's, it's so fun to be back home uh, at OSHA. I'm Dante. I'm Darian. And I'm Dion. And uh, we're just here to talk to you guys today about our, our, our story and our life, uh, our life as artists. And uh, we'll just kind of start it out with basically saying uh, we've been in the industry now uh, longer than longer than I, I, I think all you students have been alive. This is a For this is sure. our thirty fifth year in the industry in Hollywood, and um, I guess we're going to start our story off. We'll just start from the beginning, right from the beginning. And our story starts in Pittsburgh, California, the Bay Area. And we started in the arts at the very ground level. And ground, I mean street level. We started as street performers. Break on, dancers. Break dancers, street performers. On the street. On the street in the Bay Area. So our crew was called the Street Freaks. We were called the Street yep. Freaks. What was your name? I was the Dynamic Dar. I was Poppin' Fresh. And I was Midget Master. Now that that's was, not politically, that's not politically correct, correct, but I was, you know, not correct. Put it away. I was a three-year-old kid three spinning years on my old head. At the time. You know, I was, and I'm still little, so. So we started there. Our mom drove us around all over the Bay Area. We danced around Telegraph Avenue, Pier 39. And, and, and just, just from the beginning, just to show how education played a role in our lives the whole time, our mom, the reason why breakdancing came so naturally to us was because our mom had us in tap dancing 
gymnastics, karate, ever since we were younger. So cultural then, dancing. Cultural, cultural dancing. dancing. Yeah. So when break dancing came around, we naturally took to it very easily. Right. Well, she kept us in those things because Pittsburgh, California is a real blue collar neighborhood. And, um, you know, she wanted to keep us off the streets to keep us busy, you know what I'm saying? So those kind of arts and those studies kept us on a, well, it propelled us on a track. Um, that track of, of break dancing, I mean, we did like, my mother did a thing where she, she counted out, we did 33 competitions in one year. We won, we placed. I think we placed like, in 30 of them. Yeah. We were pretty um, good. That led for, to uh, actually becoming professional dancers. Yeah. So that from from breakdancing, we actually got an audition to dance for the San Francisco Ballet Company. Yes. And we all got accepted. And our oldest brother, it Derek, was like as a well. Billy Elliot type of thing where so, they were auditioning young street dancers to see if they had the potential to become ballet dancers. And we all and we had the potential. Got scholarships. We had the potential. We did have the potential as so, children. Um, but beyond that, we ended up becoming these really. Uh, we've been winning these contests, then we got picked up by the San Francisco 49ers, started dancing we halftime shows for, half for the 49ers. Shows for the 49ers. Uh, Oakland A shows for the fourth inning, seventh inning stretches, uh, doing shows for them, and we became these really uh, kind of like hometown local Bay Area boy heroes where we started getting paid to dance and we became professional dancers. And then at that time in our life, uh, our mom came to us individually mm -hmm. and asked if uh, we wanted to take the jump from, you know, becoming, you know, being these pseudo, you know, fish in this pond of what the Bay Area art scene is and jumping into the ocean, as it were, and, and join Hollywood. And individually, we all said yes. We all said yeah. yes. Um, and then I mean, we, I kind of just said yes, because I didn't know <laughs> what was going on. So I said, yeah, sure. So let's do this. we jumped in a van with a $100, $100 bill. With my mother. With my mother in our red van. My dad stayed in the Bay Area at the time. He said yeah. he'd give us a year to find out if it was something we want to do or if it was something we can pursue. And we uh, took the pilgrimage down the five freeway south yeah. and wound up in LA. And um, when this happened, all the stuff we just talked about happened uh, before the age of 10. When we got to LA, I was 10. Right, I was just 11. And I was eight turning nine. So that was our life before Hollywood. And then we got to, uh, we actually didn't get to Hollywood yet. We bounced around the <laughs> yes. town and uh, we ended up in a town called Paramount. And Paramount uh, is, you know, it's right next to Compton. If you come down 710 freeway and you exit Rosecrans, you make a right, it's Compton. You make a left, it's Paramount. And, um, and that's where we're from. Uh, and that also colored our world uh, and, and also drove us to the arts in a different way. It, it sure did. Sure did. Um, you want to drop a poem about Should I drop a poem? I guess I'll drop a poem where you got to explain uh, part of Give him, yes. how we were living. Um, where are you from? Well, that's a loaded question. See, I grew up in a blue collar town, simply meaning the blacks and the browns and me being of that category. Plus my pops made less than 40. Jesus is clear to see that me, I be well, blue collar. Better yet broke most of the time, even better poor. But when you're young and you're poor, you don't know that you're poor. It never occurs to you that you don't have a bed. Everyone sleeps on the floor. 18 in a house, one bathroom, someone always knocking on the door. But at least it was fun. Let's get back to where we started. Where are you from? See, where I'm from, there are cops and there are gangsters, also known as gangbangers. Not, not unlike the cops and robbers of the movies, but unlike the movies, it's not so black and white. There are areas of gray, and there is, say, it's hard to distinguish the difference between, between being hit up by a cop and being pulled over by a gangster. Both of those evoke a bit of pain in the pity of stomach. I think it's anger masked by shame. Maybe I'm getting ahead of myself. Let me explain. Followed by a cop. Follow six blocks, pulled over by a cop. He looks at you as if you are a mark. Where are you from? He does not wait for you to reply. Instead, he accuses you as you deny you're from the east side. And no, sir, bow your head, don't look him in the eyes. It's embarrassing. Getting pulled out the car, sitting on the curb, watching the cars drive by. But being where I'm from, that's just another part of my life. Now, when it comes to the gangbanger, all you got to be a stranger. When he asks you where you from, you can feel it laced with danger. So watch what you say next because you're playing with death. So don't claim the east and don't claim the west. Matter of fact, same rules apply. Bow your head. Don't look him in the eyes. I ain't from nowhere, man. I'm just some guy. See, he too sees you as a mark, but they don't really see you, your face or your heart. All they see are marks. But me, me being me, I got a few tricks up my sleeves, messed up situations. I got a few of those by simply picking my nose. That's right, picking my nose. Check it out. When the cop pulls up, I can feel the heat in his eyes. Or a Monte Carlo filled with gangsters pulls up next to my side. I pretend I don't see them. And I casually try to pick a booger from my nose. And for a second, just a moment, 
I'm exposed to be a man, not a mark, a human being just like you. Don't lie, you got boogers too. And the copy just continues to roll down the street and the gangsters, well, they just laugh and then they just leave. See, when you see a little bit of yourself in someone else, it can set you free. And the funny thing is, I'm probably from where they're from, the other side of town and I'm just trying to get home. So that was, Thank you for the pause. That's, that's a awesome. Pause. Hey, a little snap. I see it snapping. Um, that's a little color of what, where we, at that time of our lives, where we were. Yeah, yeah. we're from the neighborhood. Which kind of brings us, and this is during the time, right? Well, that time we were already, in that time in Paramount, and during this time that he's explaining, we were already in the business and working and, and, and doing such. But it started getting a little hairy in that neighborhood, too. Right, right. And this is where OSHA comes into our life. Because things were happening to all right, of you us. Right, you already, you already did Hook. I had just done Hook. We had gotten in trouble. We were in trouble. I mean, I, we were... I was hanging out with, I mean, a lot of um, suspect people. I had a gun pulled on me. I started shoplifting. And my parents were like... Cerritos Mall. Yeah, at Cerritos Mall. Like, we have to do uh, something about this. And so they were like, once again, the arts stepped in and helped save our lives again and gave us direction. Dante, um, when had we a friend had a brief Jen time Strobis. living in Cerritos, yeah, Jen Strovis, you knew her from Cerritos. Yeah, I didn't Cerritos. know her that well. I just knew she was a really cute girl and she was going to an art school in Called Orange Osha, County. Called Orange County House, and, and that's where it came into us. That's yeah. where we should go. It was right. like, Mom, so, if you want to get us out of this neighborhood, we send need us to, to go to Osha. Well, so that ended us you know that then this whole world of osha opened up to us and this work it comes into where you guys are at right now exactly and it's uh, all about education right like uh, we started to understand like when we went to osha it was a culture shock for us personally because it was com coming from there going to orange county and then and then also being with a bunch of other students who just did art for four hours a day five hours a day that was it was enlightening to us in a way that okay this is something that we can really do you know what I mean? For, yeah. With our lives, you, you know what I mean? Like educationally. Right. And then along with OSHA, we also started studying and we had been studying on the weekends with an acting class. And we started, we studied acting for 20 years together, uh, us, our whole family, my brothers. And so the pursuit, you know, pursuing of the arts had become a whole lifestyle. And when we talk about education, um, it just kind of changed our, our, what role did education, would you say, plays in, our, in your life and our, in our life collectively? Yeah. And which includes ocean, which actually includes things beyond, because I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to college, and uh, we actually never went to college. We didn't. We, we started working not to. at a, a, such a young age. But what you understand is education is, uh, is what you, you know, it's what you make it. It's how, right. it's how you get it. And a lot of people going to school may miss education completely but the education came in us studying acting and understanding what this lifestyle is and I I've talked about it before things like OSHA are you know in a lot of ways it becomes like Hogwarts like you, be, you you're in a you're in school you right. guys are in school right now and you are amongst like-minded people that are pursuing the arts whether it be acting filmmaking visual arts writing music dancing writing and the neighbors we came from was that wasn't readily available to us. I mean, we got an inkling of it when we first started the San Francisco, San Francisco Ballet Company. And you, you go there as a break dancer from the streets, and then you kind of walk into these places where art is. It's a. It's uh, yeah. There's a. It's a hallowed. Yeah, there's yeah. a reverence for it that we didn't grow up with necessarily. But we understood in, it. In that we, way. No, we understood it, but in a different, you know, in a different way. Yeah. In a way that it's something to be studied and pursued seriously, and that you know, what I mean, like there's a there's a there's a path that you can get on. To I think we were very like, fortunate in the fact I mean? that we grew up not having much, knowing what we knew in a small what our, our realm, and then going to the city, going dancing in these big windows overlooking the bay. Yes. Um, it's just a different it lifestyle. Early, 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 yeah, they, early they, enough to where that you don't have like you don't have anything on it. You're just like, whoa, this is different. This is amazing. This is a. Mm -hmm. This could be your life, you know. Well, then it continues at OSHA, and and OSHA is not even what it is now for you guys. We got gypped. Um, I, I love my time there, but so you guys, you guys got so much opportunities you, and so much more things going on there. It's it's unbelievable. I'm well, so proud of what Ralph or Doctor Opasic has has done. Uh, has done. <laughs> but what happens is once you're in this world, and I talk about it like Hogwarts, and I talk about it sometimes like Harry Potter, because it's literally 
once you understand the art community that you are a part of, what happens now as artists is you're no longer a regular person. It's the same thing as Harry Potter going to Hogwarts and finding out he's a wizard. I mean, that's what we actually are. It's a whole another universe of what is possible, what is valued, um, and the, the things that we make up out of, sh out of nothing, whether it be a song, a movie, a poem, is, is no nothing short of magic. It's creation. And the impact of what happens. And so it was, it's really important to kind of like value what that is and the possibilities of what that is. And, and the things that happen, even at, at the birth of OSHA, of us going there as teenagers and being around um, like-minded students is the foundation of the things that we still do now some 20, 25 years out of, out of high school. Absolutely. Um, and so after high school, and we can all go back to, to all the OSHA days, but the education continues, right? So I said, we studied for 20 plus years and, and, and continue even when we're not studying drama school, mm -hmm. the, pers the pursuing of what's going on. Because when I say you take yourself out of being a regular person and you become this artist, where everything is part of your life, right? Everything's a part of this lifestyle. Uh, you can't watch a movie just as a regular person. This movie means something. The writing, the song that you're listening to mm -hmm. can impact you, can impact your art in a certain way. A meal that you're eating. The meal that you're eating is, yeah. is an artistic experience. Something as simple as watching the sunset is going to inform you and your art and come out in the way you tell your stories uh, in the future, and it's all there. So that's kind of what happened. And so through the education of what happened is I chose not to go to college and continue to work in the industry, and mm -hmm. everyone made their own choices. In yeah, their own path. I actually didn't even graduate from OSHA. I, I mean, I, not, <laughs> I mean you, that, I, I it's not like I got kicked yeah, out. What are you doing? No, 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 but no, I, I actually, <laughs> I booked a movie, um, Race the Sun, Race the Race Sun, Sun, with Halle Berry and year. Jim Belushi. It was, I was a senior in high school, and um, it, the movie started in March in uh, Australia. So I had to leave school. I missed all the fun stuff for my senior year, but it was wor well worth it. Um, and then that was like, you know, I had to say goodbye to all my OSHA friends. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but... <laughs> you graduate from but yeah, but continuation then, school, McCall. But you, you shot a movie. But I shot a movie, um, and... Um, and that was, you know, and then I knew I wasn't going to go to college anymore. I figured that was, I think this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. And then shortly after that, I got a series and, and whatnot. Right. But which is not, I'm not one to. Yeah, so we're not trying to say you don't, don't go college. to college. I actually talk at a lot of colleges and, and I love kids that are able to go to college and whether it be drama or whatnot, because that's an education too. And that's absolutely. Absolutely. you don't want to miss out on what that is because that's all going to inform your art and your storytelling from there on out. But for us, our education became things like we created a band called originally called Fly Brown Dragons yes. and the Bosco Brothers, and we toured all up and down the uh, the West Coast. And there was a, a lot of great musicians at OSHA when we were there. There were, mm -hmm. there I were. Mean, uh, Save Paris was there, like uh, mm -hmm. real Monique big fish. Powell. Monique was there, Monique and um, and then I I created a thing called the Poetry Lounge um, through, through starting actually writing poetry in high school, and then being inspired by things like Dead Poets Society and then ultimately working with Robin Williams mm -hmm. in Hook and talking a lot of poetry with him. As, as the 90s started happening, um, I got involved in the poetry scene and I just kind of just threw this poetry venue at my house originally, our house, we all right. lived in. It was in our living room, yeah. It was our living Weekly. room. And originally it was called DPL, Dante's Poetry Lounge. And it was just friends and friends of friends. And then as things grew, the house got packed and then we went to the local sandwich shop down the street and then that got packed then we went to the little theater in Coanga, and mm -hmm. that got packed and then we ended up at this really big theater and now as you know 23 years later dpl it's the, the, biggest. the poetry lounge is the largest uh weekly open mic venue in the country mm -hmm. uh was inspiration which became dead poetry on hbo which ended up going to broadway winning a tony and and to be a part of the the scene in that way that's education that was that was part of my college, my own college. Yeah, that was yeah. definitely would have been our college years during yeah, those sure. times. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
the thing that also we're here to talk about beyond our careers and uh, is acting because even though we we start out as dancers and the way that the lifestyle and the career of the artist goes through acting and now writing and I've been producing films specifically yeah, Asian we'll, American we'll get for the into last the pr production and stuff and, like that uh, and how yes, to create a product and right. that stuff and then directing this film and this film that I think some of you guys have watched the trailer to now Fabulous Filipino Brothers. Um, our real pursuit and expertise that lies within acting, and I, and I know there's a lot of. I mean, I can see a lot of faces out there. Is there yeah, a lot of actors? Of you guys can raise your hands if you. How many we can see the acting program. A lot of actors out there. Right on. Yeah. So acting, we our pursuit. You know, we've been studying. We studied acting for twenty years. And when I say twenty years, I'm not lying. Like literally, think of two decades of studying acting. Some days, one day a week. At our most, five days a week and um six days a week. six days a week sometimes and when when you study acting at that level it's not just scene study which scene study is important but vocal training movement training scene studies film uh film classes improv improv uh and it became like almost like a military-esque thing yeah. of us like at the, for certain learning. times it was yes <laughs> and, and in and within that we started producing plays, started producing showcases. And so you start getting all these skills down. And, and these are skills that I'm using now as a producer that I didn't even realize I yeah. was- You were gaining. Gaining, gaining yeah. at the time. But uh, I'd like to talk specifically to the actors to a degree and talk about acting, because that is what- uh, Yeah, because even, even, though, even though we studied together for 20 years, we still have different processes right. and, sure. and, and, so and we're totally different actors. One time you know? just drop some just and I if there's when there's questions out there we can go into more specifics, but I'd like to I'm I feel like I'm I'm interviewing now. I'd yeah, like to yeah, find yeah. out your process specifically about about what's your process uh, of about acting and discovering a character. So even like in auditions or um if I have the role already. Um I, I like to I, I like to use different accents and different things just to open me up. I'll read it and I'll try and get the lines down and then I'll just totally break out and do something weird. And you know, you're, just, you're, you're that arbitrary. kind of actor. Yeah, yeah, arbitrary things in, in while I'm just reading it. And maybe I'll go right back to where I initially, my first instinct was, but now I have all this other interesting things happening in my brain and in my body. Um, so that I'm not, I'm, I don't feel like I'm robotic and just stuck to what's on the written page, you know what I mean? So, I mean, that's how I did it. And we, when we did the movie Head Thieves, there's this movie called Head Thieves that hasn't come out yet, but um, I was reading the script and I was like, this sounds like I should, it sounds really good with a Southern accent. And I was like, I'm gonna do this. And it was like an independent film. And I felt like, you know what, independent film, I could take as many liberties as I want sometimes, you know what I mean? Sometimes when you're in a studio film, you feel the pressure of the studio and the producers, everybody on you, but some, some, I don't know, and we were and we were involved in the creation of this project as well. So it's funny enough because as I had that idea, you also had the idea yeah. of having a southern accent, and also the other lead guy had an accent, so and we were two like, "What Asian the guys with southern? Yeah, accents. two Filipinos with an Asian accent. I mean, with, with a, a well, southern that, accent." It goes um, to the point where when we talk about acting and the process of of, of the acting, and the, and specifically for Hollywood, you guys, because I know we study theater, and you have to find your style and within OSHA and within our other acting training outside of OSHA, we learned all the styles. And I think you need to learn those styles. It, it all comes to Stanislavski to a degree, but you're learning Strasbourg, Strasbourg you're going, you know, Meisner, sense memory Meisner, inside out, you're doing, you're doing Meisner, Adler. you're getting into the moment, doing routines and, and repetition, you're doing Stella Adler outside in character work. And I think you need to do all that, but when you, you understand? It's important. It's yeah, very you should important. do all that stuff. And a lot of that is to help you do theater where you're going to do a, a you're, you're going to be on stage. You're going to be on stage for three two, hours. three hours, and so you got to do that. But when you're doing Hollywood, you're doing one scene, two scenes today, right now. It's very a different method. And this so immediate sea of now. Yeah. Ultimately, there's an immediate sea of now. I mean, but you need all that work gets you to that place. Like, see, for me, like Dion just told his process. Mine is almost opposite in that I I like to come from the inside out and come from internal things and find out where I'm similar to the character or what moves me about what this character is and what personally is in me before and then it kind of journeys out but that's kind of like all these are kind of like preferences too as well because sometimes that's not working and if it's not working that, yeah. you gotta 
you got to move on. You better have some, a toolbox. You got to right. have a toolbox. I'm going to move on. I, I, maybe I need to put on a different, you know, sometimes it's something, an outfit, sometimes it's some, some kind of memory that, that gets you. It's, it's, it's just like, or it's an exercise. Or it's an exercise. Or was, you go back to these exercises that you're doing now, and, yeah. and, it, and it gets you tapped into something. Okay, now I can I can shoot the scene. Right. You Everything know, you're uh, learning is it's you'll be using throughout your careers for sure. And when I talk about the actor's process, and part of it's this whole lifestyle, and, and the way I, I look at it, the, the the journey, it's been thirty plus years. It's, it's really a journey in your life. And when I talk to young artists, and this is actors or any discipline you guys are doing, but the way that Hollywood is set up, you know, you, the second you come to town, whether you come from Orange County, or New York, LA, or God knows where, everyone's coming off the bus or plane, you know, every day. You're basically at best a million to one shot. You're a million to one shot. You may be a 10 million to one shot. And the reality is, you're probably not gonna make it. You know, you, I'm talking to young cats out there. It's like, uh, you know, you guys are here in the Zoom, and it's almost like going to, you know, going to law school or going to medical school. And they're like, look left, look right. Like, they're not gonna be doctors. They're not gonna be lawyers. Like, they, these guys aren't gonna be actors or filmmakers because the whole system is set up to fail. But that being said, if you work hard enough, you get good enough. You have a little luck. Like, you're gonna make it. Like we made it, friends of ours made it. You see it happen, but the the cast twenty two of it is you're doing all this work to create other characters and do all these things. But the, out of the million to one shot, the ten million to one shot, the reality is there's only one of you, and that's your only real shot. And they're talking about how doing personal work, and that's where it comes back down to, to having the courage to somehow reveal yourself. Through the through the character, through the through, art, through the story, through the, story, through through the, the song, the... and the people that are able to reveal themselves and having that courage as as artists are the ones that actually have a shot to transcend the millions of people coming to Hollywood yeah. every year. And even as I'm on the other side of the camera these days, casting, until mm, we can mm. actually see who you are, we can't even cast you. Yeah. Because you're you're hidden behind what you think you're supposed to do, as opposed to like let's. Start understanding. Like the only thing you voice. can do is be the you, best you. Your voice, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, I mean, again, we've been pursuing this a long time. We and we have these really crazy conversations throughout our journey as actors. But what has happened in our journey is, from acting, we went into writing and filmmaking. And uh, me personally, I started about ten years ago, and I got into filmmaking and started producing predominantly right. Asian American films. And why why did you why did you start doing that? Several things happened, you know. Um, first, but one from a pu purely actor's point of view. The thing is, is that yeah. uh, you guys know because you guys are studying the classics. Like you guys will do these classic, huge, classic, big, big lead things in plays, playing Stanley, playing you know, doing. And, and then when you go to Hollywood, you're like, oh, I'm I'm auditioning for these little things. Like especially us as ethnic actors. Especially when we were starting, there weren't big roles. There weren't there weren't yeah. roles for us to do what we were training to do. Yeah. There, they they right. they just weren't writing them, and the pr the projects weren't being yeah, made. Yeah. So and, and you weren't given the like, opportunity. You're doing Neil to. Simon and Shakespeare and Shanley, yeah, and but, then you go to audition for a TV show, and you have like four lines. And you're and like, like waiter number two. And they're like, uh, you're like uh, right. how do I put everything I know into those four those four right. lines? <laughs> Which is fine. So that's kind of one reason yeah. why you started producing. Right. Why we started producing and, and writing. Right. It's you know? about telling our story and figuring out that our story matters, your story matters just as Absolutely. much as anyone else's story. Absolutely. And then specifically things started happening where you do get older in this in this industry and you start to understand it's not just about you. Mm -mm. There, are, mm -hmm. There's a next generation coming up. And for me, specifically, two things happened. Um, I was doing Avatar The Last Airbender and uh, Mako, who plays, who originally played Uncle Iroh, and he was a really legendary Asian American actor. Yeah, he was legendary. nominated for an Oscar, Sam Pebbles, and uh, he started the, the East oldest, West Players. Yeah, East West Players, the oldest running uh, theater of people of color in the country. And he passed away during book two of the series, which I think some of you guys know. And he had played my uncle and my father several times in my career. And so, you know, we always put him on a certain pedestal, and then you realize that I'm part of that we're part of that lineage of asian actors mm -hmm. and asian artists and he did all this stuff for my generation like start this amazing 
theater company, theater company that I also grew up in that mm -hmm. I did plays mm -hmm. in and, mm -hmm. and wrote a play in. And then you go, what am I, what, I have to do something for the next generation. For you guys, like I gotta use my platforms to kind of help bring up the next generation. That kind of sparked my my uh, my consciousness of mm -hmm. of becoming a storyteller on that that mm -hmm. level. And then at the same time, the digital media age happened and our whole industry changed. Right. We can get into that too. You guys, I know we'll yeah. definitely get into that because I think the most you know why I love talking at colleges and even in high schools now is because the world's changed and it's your guys's world. Like there's things that happen in the industry where uh, just the whole world changed. So for me, I met, it was like 10 years ago, I met uh, AJ Raphael, who's a big YouTuber, and I met Kev Jumba, mm -hmm. uh, who was one of the top YouTubers at that time. And they they literally told me, um, he was at a bar and Kev wasn't even old enough to be in the bar at the time, he was like 20. Right. I was like, who is this kid? And then I find out who he is and what they're doing on YouTube and then they were like, you, Dante, you need to get online. And I'm like, nah, man, I get online. I'm not, yeah. that's all you got. That's your generation. And then they're like, no, Dante, Google yourself. You're online. I'm like, well, it's as I said, if, you, if, you don't, if you're not controlling the conversation around what's going on with you, with who you are online, then someone else is already, there's already people there controlling that conversation, let alone the idea of having to create something and be outside the studio system and be able to get directly to audiences. At that time, Kev Jumba had three and a half million followers uh, on YouTube and the content he was doing was rivaling the numbers at that time of Gossip Girl. And it was like, mm. wow, the world has changed. And so part of my whole career as a producer was hooking up and I got to deal with Maker Studios who created the first MCN and I started working with a lot of these these YouTubers, especially Asian American YouTubers, creating vehicles for them for films and learning about what they're doing, but mm -hmm. then consequently building bridges because there are a lot of things that, as traditional media that is still the same as far as acting, story, writing, story directing, storytelling, storytelling, storytelling. I mean, and so instead of being, you know, I, I always say to a lot of guys from our generation, we thought we were going to inherit Hollywood. We thought we were going to inherit this town, but in, in actuality, the world's changed and the world is yours. It's, like, your, yes. it's your time. You guys are going to be working. I know guys in college now, people that create a lot of social media and some traditional media and right out of high school, right out of college, they're out and they're running things and guys and women my age are, are working for you. you. And that's how reality. the world, that's that the, is the reality, reality of, of the, how the world has changed. And instead of being bitter from, from my point of view, <laughs> which I do have a lot of peers that are bitter about that kind of thing. It's not about being bitter. It's about we're learning from you guys, yeah, the your generation. It's about the bridge. It's about building bridges. Like I said, the world's changed. It's about still learning from each other about what's going on. There's so much things to learn from yeah. each other still. And so I guess that brings us to well, well, it does. But let 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 because they because they let's let me ask you a, okay. a question about right. um, okay, about voice act about voice oh. acting because I, I think some of those some they, they may want to be interested specifically how did you get into voice acting and and then you can talk about Avatar I mean you've been into some some of the bi the biggest voice acting things yeah I, that have been around so we've been actors for a long time and voice acting is a, is a specific uh, kind of like just corridor of of acting and for a lot of years um, it hasn't got a lot of attention that other things because. The way that the industry works out at the very basic, basic kind of like way to look at it is, is how to get a paycheck. Like, well, yeah, for how, survival. <laughs> for survival for artists out there. It's like, how do I get paid up in, up in this industry? And again, it's different for everybody, right? For actors, it goes like, of course, everything that people know. I want to be a movie star, do movies. Right. I want to be on a TV show, do television. TV commercial. But then there's commercials, which is a different thing, which yeah. people make millions of dollars off commercials every year. Yes. This guy has four commercials he, has, he shot yeah. during COVID. Um, but beyond that, there's there's things that people hear of like hand modeling. There's industrials, which are videos that people shoot that are only for like inside a, a corporation like McDonald's that no one's going to see, but you're just doing, there's several ways to cut a check, right? Mm -hmm. It goes on. I see there's musicians in the house. Same thing with musicians. There, of course, there's the albums you guys want to do. There's also writing music for other people. Mm -hmm. There's also writing music that's going to be theme on commercials, songs. theme yeah. songs, um, just little sound alike, sound alike. Yeah, there's 
our producing Many friends are to, doing all to these make beats money. and sound bites that are going or in to, TV shows. To stay working while you're working yeah. on your project, your own pet project that you, you want right. to do. Right. So when you get into the industry, you find all these avenues. different avenues of how to survive, catch a check in the industry. Right. So for a long time, voice acting for me was like that one of those corridors. And, uh, and we'd all audition for many things weekly. And sometimes it'd be a voice for something, mm -hmm, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, it just so happened that by the time I kind of got the voice acting and, and I was at a certain place in my career and then kind of the series I did, whether it be Jake Long, the American Dragon at Disney, and then of course, Avatar, which became this other phenomenal hit. It was at a time where Comic-Con popped off and the- Absolutely, yeah, it was crazy. Yeah, and was then Comic-Con opened up the world of fandoms and geek culture and uh, and so many things that happened where all all of a sudden these you know basically the fandoms and the kids and in, in Comic Con became and still is right now the arbiters of taste of Hollywood. I mean literally. Yeah, the Marvel studios, is the biggest thing. Mar yeah. yeah, Marvel, DC. They're, I yeah. mean literally the studios go yeah. to Comic Cons every year, especially the mecca of Comic Cons in San Diego, and spend you know. A billion dollars to promote what's going out but also to find out what the next thing is what's the next stranger things what's the next star wars what's the next harry potter and the reality is it's your guys's taste it's you guys it comes from for sure you guys yeah. and that's like the real magic and amazing thing about that so with with myself and voice acting also as an artist for you guys out there it's just one of those things that the lesson that Zuko taught me is this. A, don't judge a book by its cover. I didn't understand who Zuko was when I first when I first met him, when I first got hired to 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 play him. I thought I was just gonna be this bad guy on Nickelodeon. I was like, okay, he's kind of a weird dude. He's got a ponytail and a scar on his face. <laughs> and his name's Zuko. And I was like, Zuko, like Danny Zuko. Danny and they're like, Zuko, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, and I was like, whatever, like I'll be a hero on Disney and I'll just be a bad guy on Nickelodeon, right? Um, but what happens is it just, it's really just kind of like, uh, just a story for my career. It's like, you never know what's going to happen. Right. It's, it's one of those things where as an artist, you should have your plan of what you want to do, anything you want to do. Of course we all, we're all going to school. We're all working. There's a thing, yeah. there's a dream that we want to go and you should work hard for that dream and that plan. But you also got to have some wherewithal to be open to see other doors open up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and certain doors open up voice acting doors opened up for me it was not my dream to come to hollywood to be a voice actor it was nowhere in my mind but mm -hmm. if you have the wherewithal to walk through certain doors and take those chances sometimes um there are plans that can happen that you didn't plan that could, could be better than your plan different than your plan Absolutely. amazing plans and and a character like prince zuko and voice acting has for sure changed mm. my life. Mm -hmm. So as artists, work hard at your plan and things you're doing, but also have- Stay open, yeah. Yeah, you gotta have some flexibility to stay open to see other things that are happening because we we don't know everything. No. We don't, we actually know nothing half right. the time. Yeah, well. <laughs> um, well, yeah, I mean, but that's also when you're trying to get a job, but then now you're producing too. So you have yes. a little bit more control about what you want to say and what you know what kind of message you want to put out there too you know yes and then but it's always how how it lands we don't know right there's a lot of people well you can't control how anything lands no you just have to do your art as truthful to yourself as you can and make what you feel is the best product you can make or the best performance and who knows if it's going to take off it could be the best acted piece but no one sees it or it could be the worst right. and everybody sees it you know what i mean so well, it's you just kind of have to be it's dispelling um some of the things that people hear and i'm sure you've all heard in your family and we've all heard in our family it's like it's not who you know it's about being lucky it's about this and that and yeah luck for sure plays a role a role a role in, somewhat in in your success in this industry but um you think, but you don't know what luck is people don't, are misconstruing what luck is right they think oh you got to be lucky and I, and I go, well, first of all, you got to get good. Getting good is not lucky. Getting good is your job. Getting good is all the time you're doing in school, all the movies you're watching, all the plays you're reading, the books you're reading, the going to museums, the songs you're listening to, watching the sunsets, getting 
in, 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 in student of the world. Yeah, just getting in just with yourself and, and figuring out who you are and how you want. That's getting good. That's not luck. There's no luck involved there. That's completely on you. What luck is, is that someone uh, three months ago, a year ago, wrote something that happens to go through a whole studio and people green light it. And then at that time when they're casting it, it just happens to be you're the right age and the right type to play that role. Mm. And so you uh, are good. And so being good, you get luckier. Right. You have more you opportunities, the better you get. And then you can book that job. And if you book that job, the luck is that that role and everyone that you shoot, but then the director does a good job. The, mm. the, the cinematographer behind the camera is doing a great job shooting it. The people doing the music are supporting the role mm. that Everything you're doing. Everything has to come together. You know, the PR people that are, are, that are pr promoting the film yeah. when it comes out, that everyone, it's all working together. And then you got to be lucky that if all these hundreds of people are working at the right time, and then when that role drops, that the world is in a place and time to that they're ready to receive it. Right. That's the luck. So yeah, yeah you got to get lucky. That has to happen. But to get good, that's not lucky. That's your job. And so, I mean, you know, yeah, that's no, just one of my philosophies. I feel you. Sure. I feel you. So sure. as we, you know, talking about now Asian American cinema and producing, yeah. And producing what ultimately became Fabulous Filipino Brothers, I started working with these guys and started making these movies, independent films, writing films, uh, co-writing films with these cats. And early in the game, people were like, you know, why are you doing this, Dante? And my other friends that are producers, like, you know, let's put a, 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 a white lead in this. We can get more money for this or whatnot. And I was trying to explain to them that that's not what producing is about for me. Uh, I'm an actor. I make my living acting. When mm -hmm. I, if I'm going to produce films, I want to put stories out there. And now, you know, they're calling it representation, which is great. And I've been a part of uh, the conversation in Hollywood, which has led up to Crazy Rich Asians. And I'm very proud of that. And I started a group called We on the Eighth with AJ Raphael, mm -hmm. where we were celebrating Asian media every eighth of every month um, and screening shorts and having talks with uh, guys like John M. Chu. From who directed Crazy Rich Asians to Tim Delaghetto to all you know J.K. News to Justin Chan to Jimmy O. Yang guys coming in and just really putting down for the next generation and I'm very proud to be a part of that conversation and so when Crazy Rich Asians happened you know people were like mm -hmm. you were right like you were right now as you know our careers and being a, cum a cumulative effect of our generation what's going ahead is we as Asians in the industry in Hollywood are the highest profile Asians that have been in Hollywood since the birth of Hollywood. It, yeah. And so that's really wild. And the narr that, that narrative has changed. We, it's all just narratives. It's all just stories. But the great thing is, you know, we're the storytellers. Right. Yeah. So we can help create. We don't have to be a slave to the story. There are stories that don't really uh work for us that's not really helpful to what Absolutely. we're doing but the magical thing is we're storytellers you're storytellers you can change the narrative you can change your narrative actually if right. you want to succeed in this industry you have to be in control of your narrative to mm -hmm. change it and to lead it to where you want to go and so that's the thing yeah how you want to be seen and uh, yeah absolutely, absolutely. And you just I mean, the, the, the industry is rough and it could be rough, but you have to know that your story, even though they don't know it yet, that's the one that they need. Like that, my story is the one that you need. Like you have to believe that that's what's got to drive you and continue to, to, to push forward. So, okay, I'm just going to kind of be like an interviewer to you. Okay. Like, okay, so now that, now that, okay, so good, great. I got this idea. I want to produce it. Now, how, how do, where did you go to get the, I mean, cause yeah, you got an idea. Where did you go to get the money? Like, how do you produce the, how do you, you got the idea. How'd you trick where people did, into you giving go? you money? That's the, that's the deal. No, how no. do you begin to produce your idea? To how do we do it? To well, get the whole to thing about when, once you, you start producing content, whether you're going to be doing it on a YouTube level or whether you're doing music, whether you're doing films now, right now you're getting to something that you're doing in your living room, which is great, which you should do. To I got to raise ten thousand. I got to raise twenty five thousand. I got to raise a hundred thousand. I got to raise five hundred thousand. I got to raise a million. The biggest obstacle in creating films when you get to that level is financing. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. one thing to have the idea, and then it's 
financing. And for me, I was doing Asian American films and then I was raising money stateside. And then someone uh, gave me the idea. Well, you know, I was talking about being the arbiters of taste for uh, Asians in America, being the arbiters of taste for their piece of pie in America. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. then someone in the room said, well, you're, you're so American. I go, what do you mean? Because Americans are always concerned with their piece of the pie, and we are American after all. Everybody wants to represent their piece of the pie and make sure we're not cut out of it. And then this particular guy said, well, Dante, look at the world. We are the pie. He said that. And an Asian world, guy said yeah. that to me as an Asian American. He's like, I said, what? He goes, we are the pie. And I went, what? He goes, you have to look at the world. And, I, and that set off things in my mind, and I was like, I got to get on a plane. And then I jumped on a plane and went to Asia, went to the Philippines, went to Singapore, went to China. And I realized I need to connect with the systems that are Asia. And so I started creating this new thing that I, I've been calling New Asian Media, which is borderless Asian media about connecting, um, you know, notable talent, Asian American talent in front of the, in front of and behind the cameras, right. actors mm -hmm. and directors and writers and connecting them with notable talent from Asia, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in front of the camera, behind the camera, and then connecting to the financial, what you know, the financial systems of Asia, and mm -hmm. getting. So this particular film was produced from a studio in the Philippines with one of, the, you know, with one of the biggest stars in the Philippines. So then you, who Yusuf, starring with us, who are notable Filipino actors in America, and mm -hmm. using that template. And so, you got to get creative. I mean, there. There's no rules. There are there rules no in the rule. town, but there is no there rules. Right. rules. And, and how that could relate to, to them, because the only reason why you were able to really go there and pitch and do your thing and convince people is because we practiced and we, we, we did our, we, we right. produced thousands of showcases, like you said, our own content, our own thing, in which you guys should continue producing yeah. your own content now at your level, in your backyard, keep shooting, doing what you're doing, because then that, that that's the only way you can convince yeah. for the money. You'll be ready when that luck comes. Sure. Yeah. Yes. So any other questions? <laughs> um, okay. Let's see. No. Um, We're soon going to open it up to you guys. Too. I know. So we, Sharna, yeah. Sharna, I'm sure you have a list of questions. Yeah, they they have a couple in here, but you guys are on a roll. So no, I mean, gonna... I'd like to get some questions from them because I and then we we'd like to talk like, to, to the students. Okay, because I I still know we would love to hear about the fabulous Filipino brothers. We didn't go into much extent with that, but oh, sure. I had a couple great questions. Um, one came from Daisy No. So um, if we want to spotlight Daisy, we can. But she said, Daisy, where you at, Daisy? Yeah, Eric, I don't know if you can find Daisy. Daisy No. Oh, Daisy. I see. I see you. Daisy. I see you, Daisy. Oh, she's waving. Hi. What's up in your yellow, yellow room? In the yellow room. She's yeah. an 11th grader in integrated arts in uh, the conservatory that I'm the director. So I, I'm familiar with Daisy. But right. Daisy asked a great question. And um, Gretty asked a similar question. So I'm going to kind of put them together. But it's uh, she said, okay. what Gretty, was it like to Gretty, pursue Gretty, a career? We have, we have all these screens, so we can see, so a, lot we can see everybody. see everybody. Excellent. Yeah, we see you guys. Um, and you you touched on this, but I think it's really great because I think a lot of students would want to know the answer to this. Um, what was it like to pursue a career in an industry where Asian American roles were scarce? And how did you make opportunities for yourself when there weren't many around? That's a great question. Okay, well, first of all, um, back in the 80s when they didn't know what Filipinos were, so we were auditioning for any ethnicity, basically. They would say Asian. And Asian. you know when they said Asian, they, they meant really Chinese, meant Chinese or, Japanese or Japanese. East, really East Asian. He, that's what they, right. that's Korean. what stereotypically um, they, they thought. But as you know, Filipinos were Southeast Asian, so we're a little darker. We have a little more Latino side. And Spanish. And Spanish. But we also auditioned for Latino roles. Mexican, well, Puerto you know, Rican. Puerto Rican. But, so we had that going for us. But not only that, these guys also had the same audition that I had. Yeah. So, so now, we're basically it was, like, oh, now we're problems. fighting we against each other too. for the same role as well when it's a small little role anyway. Do you know what I mean? So, I mean, that was tough. So what was it like? Though? It was hard. This guy, <laughs> no, um, he booked no, a lot. He booked, yeah. One time I booked a job and Darian came with me. And then when they took the kids to go and shoot the scene upstairs, they took Darian. I, I was, was just there doing my homework. And I was like, mom. mom. <laughs> I thought so I had, this was my job. She said, no, it's okay, as long as one of you are in. I was like, this is crazy. I mean, so I had to, you know, I had to learn to fight for myself being the youngest brother. Um, so that's just a piece is, of it, but it's, well, this, go, is, this is the thing. Go deeper. I'm gonna go a little deeper. Well, just, okay, so being ethnic in Hollywood, it's hard. You know, there's, there's less, there's more roles now, thank God. But when we were coming out, there was like one Asian role for every 100 white roles, like 
that was maybe that was kind maybe, of less. Maybe, maybe, maybe less. Maybe. And maybe. so, but this is the deal. Like, I, I always tell, you know, young actors, Asian, Black, Latino, and I've been in the rooms and talking. It's like, yo, that's all true. Throw that out the window. They're like, what do you mean? I was like, throw it out the window, because, like I told you guys earlier, whether you're Black, white. Asian, Latino, man, woman, gay, straight, trans, whatever. You're a million to one shot, 10 million to one right. shot. None of you are supposed to make yeah, it they anyway. Don't, they don't, and, and like I said too, they don't know what they want really. Right. Like no. we're on the producing side too. It's like we might have written something and had something in mind, yeah. but someone comes yeah. in the room and blows you away and it doesn't, and, right. and it's like, oh, we got to change this. If we're, we we we're going to look it. at the stats. Dion was on a show, City Guys, for years. Right. Yeah. It wasn't NBC. written for a Filipino boy. No, it, it was, was it was written for, um, you know, uh, what, a Puerto right. Rican in New York. Yeah, and, I came and Rufio in. was not written for Rufio a Filipino was not boy. Written I mean, Filipino. The, the right. thing about it is, uh, as if we were, put it this way, as if we were to play Filipinos, you wouldn't have a career. We wouldn't have anything. We wouldn't have anything. And it's, it goes for everybody. Like I said, anybody, white, black, Asian, other yeah. girl, fe male, female, at the end of the day, you have to be better than everybody else. Right. Period. You have to go into the audition. And when you say better than everybody else, it's not like a sports thing that you're better. It's better at being who you, you are. Right. Than anybody, because yeah. in the end, if they don't choose you and you were it's terrific, not really about it's, you. Yeah. Well, remember you. It's you. It's 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 being you. But the you know, idea you know, to you know be know able saying? to go and. You guys are getting all ready to perform and perform. So when it's time to perform, if you can't perform to your best, yeah, of you got you, to be the best of yourself. Yes. I mean, you don't really have a, you know, the thing is, if the role was not written Filipino and I go in there, I always know, and we've always known, in order to scale in this business, I'm gonna have to beat sure. white kids out of white parts. I'm gonna have to beat black kids better out than of black everybody parts. Else. But I think being B boys and coming from the breakdancing era, where we it's battled true. strangers in the it's streets true. at such a young age, it has a little bit of that element to it. It's yes. like every audition became this, and still is. Like I'm gonna throw down. It's what a battle. You got. Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, it's but like, when it's, it's like the, that, the thing is when it's your time to throw down. You better throw down. Be prepared to throw right. down. So, yeah, it I is also, hard being Asian in the industry. It's getting better. But it's hard. Being, but like anything it's that's hard, it's hard I, being anybody. In but the anything that like anything being, it, it's a blessing too. Like I, we wouldn't have it any other way because that's it's kind of like it's built us. It's right. it, yeah. it is what it, it's. But I heard a, a cast director. Cast director once told me she's like, we're praying. We, we we said yes to your picture and we want to see you in the room. So when you're in the room, kill it because I want to stop casting. I want to. I want I want you to kill it. I brought you in. I want you to get the role. Now it's on you to do, you know, fulfill what what they, what they think you can do. You know what I'm saying? Um, so they're like, you have the job. When if you think about it, I have the job when I walk in. Just don't lose the job. You know what I mean? It's a different way of thinking than coming in going, "Ooh, I hope they like me. I hope they like me." You know what I mean? It's mm. you kind of turn the tables on them. That's what that's that's kind of what I do also in commercials. I do a lot of commercials because. I feel like commercials are, are real easy. Turn the and, tables on. And, and it's just as like Jedi mind tricks. I Jedi mind trick the Jedi director mind over tricks. even Zoom now. I'm just like, what's up, man? How you doing? They're like, hey, how you how you doing? You know? And I just kind of interview them. Like, do I want to do this job? In my mind, that's kind of where I kind of go to. You know what I'm saying? And it just it it, it it takes away from begging for a job and more more of like, okay, let's work together. Let's do something together. That's you know true. what I'm saying? It's true. Um, yeah. I, Did you, I, I love it. We've got a, we've got a couple a couple more. Question. Do you want to do a couple more questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We got um, an students, hour. I know, right? We got all the time. <laughs> students, when I call your name, do your little digital hand, and then we can spotlight you, and you can ask your own question, and then I can. I don't have to yeah. worry about it. You can be you. Um, let's take uh, Bella Casperson. She has a good question. Bella, if you do your hands and it'll move you to the top for me. Perfect. Hi, All right, Bella. Bella. Hi, Bella. I don't see Bella yet. I don't see Bella. Do you see her right there? Hi. There she oh, is. There's, there's Bella. Bella. What's up? Hi. Hi. <laughs> okay, you doing, so what is one piece of you're I'm choppy. good. How are you? You're a little choppy. Well, you're a little okay. choppy, but I'll I'll say her question. Sorry, okay. Bella. I Thank didn't you, know. Bella. Okay. Oh, Hopefully. there you go, sweetheart. Turn your camera off, and then you're you're good. <laughs> okay. Is it... okay? Perfect. What is one piece of acting advice that you wish you knew when you were at OSHA? Mm. Did you guys get that? Mm. Hello. Yeah, okay. that's a good question. While we were at OSHA. Which that we wish we knew. 
Um, um, ooh, well, what I just said about the casting director thing, uh, it's, you know, I wish I had known that. Uh, I think I would have worked a little bit more. Um, ultimately, with acting, and it's at OSHA or any time in life, you know, we work together and we've studied together for so long that we've seen, you know, and when I got to direct these guys, and it was so great because I've actually seen every performance and they've seen every performance I've done in my life. I've seen every performance they did in their life. And, but we also did the same characters because we're in class together. Like someone's going to do a scene from, you know, whatever. Blue denim. Blue whatever. denim or through, uh, you know, uh, some Neil Simon piece. But we're all going to do it. And then you realize and this is how it is too when you're We actually acting. went in, in and out of each other. Yeah, it was we, like, pause, pause, you go in there go in and there. you continue the scene. Well, pause, you know, which well, was. What you realize is you play the character. There's an old saying. You're, you're, the stuck with the stuck with the you're stuck with the character and the character stuck with you. And what that, I always knew what that meant, but then when you really understand what that means is we all can play the same character, right? But like you could play Zuko. Someone's going to play, Dev Patel played Zuko later on. What happens is you play the character where you play, you play the character where you and the character intersect. That's how you're going to play it. Mm -hmm. And it's, mm -hmm. that's it. That, and you know, whether or not you get cast for it or whatnot, that's where you're going to play the character. And so what does that mean? That means you work on the character and you work on yourself. You, work on yourself. you can only go as far into a character as you can go as far into yourself. And so, and you got to figure out where that is, but that also lets it off of you, you guys, when you're in school, especially now. Yeah, competition is good. Healthy competition is good. Every audition is a competition, but you know, you're never going to play the part like the person who's over there that's going to play a part the other side of the room and you're going in for the same part. So you're not really competing with them because you can never do what they're going to do and they can never do what you're going to do because right. that's not where you guys intersect. Right. Um, and we got to see it with brothers, some of the people I'm most closest to. And so I think in OSHA now, you know, let go of the drama of, of course, we all want to get the parts. Of course, we all want to. It still it, is it, high school. It still yeah. hurts yeah. You when know. you don't get something that you really wanted. But to understand that at least if you can play it the way you're going to play it to the nth degree, you have no control of who they're going to hire. You can only have control of like how you play it, and if you can play it to the yes to the just get the get all the juice out of it sure. that you can get out of it. Sure. And then also, I would just say, Bella, that I mean, just really enjoy enjoy what you enjoy your time right now. I mean, the times that we had during that age and oh, when we're kind of. What'd you say? The time that we had, sorry, I thought I heard something. I did, I heard something too. Um, the times that you guys are doing now, you, as a young artist and what we did, you're yeah. really, it's a time when you're like, really like, you go for it. I mean, give it all you got because like during that time, Dante was fortunate enough to do Hook and we started the, and, and we had seen, um, what's it called? Um, the Carpe Diem. Oh, movie, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Dead Poets Society. Society. Dead Poets Society. So we started our own sort of Dead Poets Society, and we were declaring we our, our, our artistic selves, and, and we went to the beach, and we would do all these things in one night, and we would just do all these crazy things. But you realize that all these things, wins, losses, the things that you're learning now at OSHA, they're all going to be in your artistic life forever. Like it's, it's, the, it's the bank and it's what's going to drive you the times when it's hard, when you, if you come out and, and come into the real business, you're going to fall, you're going to look back at these times at OSHA and your training and all that stuff. And it's going to, it's that's, your foundation. That's what's yeah. going to fuel you. I mean, it, it really is. So, I mean, right. you guys are young, have fun. You know, have fun. Yeah, have make, make there's sure. two different things. Like one thing, have fun. It doesn't matter, but then right. it does matter. Sure, sure. you got to sure. find that balance to where sure. you know also, you're doing it because you're happy while doing sure. it. You know what and I'm saying? Also, but it also a, a, sometimes actor, it feels great to feel the pain of losing going on right now. pieces. As an actor <laughs> and as an artist, the wins and the losses. Like go in, yeah, go in on the wins, sure, but go in on the losses too and see how that moves you, how that feels, and really. Get to know yourself. It's really a self knowledge too. Like, really yeah. let yourself go in there and, and see what what is this dark. Yeah, dark especially area when you don't have to pay bills yet and you're yeah. just discovering your artistic ability. You know what I mean? Like you said, you have to. Sometimes explore, you got to catch a check as an adult. Yeah, so. you know, explore. And, and and you're probably not as cool as you think you are. And it doesn't really matter. <laughs> right. Like, right. Don't take yourself that seriously. All that yeah. stuff right. you take in school when you think you're that cool. You're Trying to be cool, cool is gonna matter. stifle a lot of stuff. So yeah.
I, I love it. You guys, we have so many questions. Now I'm worried we're going to run out of time. So oh, no, I'm gonna, no, no, no. we're going to go fast. Okay, I'm going to go to Ethan. Ethan Swartz. Ethan, Ethan, Ethan Swartz. are you up there at the top somewhere? Get your hand raised so we can highlight you. I don't see no Ethan. Ethan Swartz. He has a good question. Ethan? Yeah, I'm, I'm right here. Oh, hi, Ethan. All right. What's up, Ethan? Hi, guys. Um, how do you guys keep coming up with new characters and new choices without drawing a blank? What's up? Um, well, those okay. guitars, those are dope. Yeah, nice. um, I have one hanging on my wall too. I don't play it, but it's an art piece. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, <laughs> well, that's, I mean, in, there's inspiration comes from everything. Right. I mean, like I, like you were saying earlier, it's like, you're, uh, once you decide you're gonna be an artist, you, your, your radar is out on everything and anything that interests you, you, you take note of sure within yourself or outwardly and or with another person or it could be like a cat that you see that's interesting behavior that, that cat's right. doing i mean everything could inspire you if you're if you're if you're in that mindset it's 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 yeah. just a way that yeah so everything inspires everything the, the waiter said something or he had a little lisp in his voice or that it's sure. you're, we're, we're, we're stealing from from everything we're and stealing that's from minute, but then also yeah Stay in touch with what's going on with the world because that's who we're communicating to. So it's like, be up to news with the day. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, be open to little minute things, but also know that the, there's a world going out there, and this art yeah. goes out to the world, doesn't go out to nothing. So kind of stay relevant to that as well, too. You know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's why I said like when I rehearse lines, I do it many different ways that I know I'm not going to do it. You know, so it just gives me other ideas and it just frees me up. Um, like I, I did this project and I had to play a guy with like a club foot and we were, I was even working with it, the one that I shot in Mexico and yeah. Morocco. And then when I was in Mexico, I actually saw a man with a club foot walking down the street and I followed him for like two blocks and I just watched him. Not creepily, but just to be Not like creepily. Were you like a spy? I was like a spy. <laughs> I'm an actor spy. No, but, it, but that's what you got to do. You just got to. And then and then and then you see that and then you try to mimic it, but then you can't just mimic it. Then you got to go, okay, how was how how this? How, how did it happen? It? And yeah, and why is yeah. this happening? And, and and you know what the struggle was. And then you think about how how was his life before that and all this stuff. So you do the homework and you dive yeah. deeper and you use your imagination. And then and when even, it's on screen, and even on the right. flip side of that, you know, how do you come up with new characters, new things? You know, as young artists, you know, everybody thinks they're going to be doing the new no one's ever done this before i'm the first whatever but right. the reality is go back and it's actually more powerful when you understand that everything we're trying to do has actually been, been done. done already it's been done already and many a, times at a very high level at a, a, done greatness and there's actually a big strong power in connecting to the lineage of artists that you come from right. whoever yeah. you think you are in this industry it's been done several times or want to be or, you know, or want to be or what you're aspiring to and instead of thinking of like, I'm going to be the first. Yeah, and, and, and recreating the will, understand that right. you're a part of that will and plug yourself in and then go back. Because so, the, yeah. the great part of our industry as filmmakers is our history is in films. Yeah. So study. And then it's you there. go you like, I it. think I'm this cool guy. You're like, okay, well, that was like right. Brad Pitt and Johnny Depp. And hold on a second, that went to like James, James Dean. Dean. Then I went to Mar like Marlon Brando, Montgomery Marlon Cliff. Brando. And then I went to Brando, of course. And then, and then you study all these things and you read all these things. And then you do create because when you, if when you're it stealing, you, it's creative. It yes. is new. Yeah. Like everything new has come around, but the fact that you're doing it is new. And so you kind of create things by looking at things in the, in the world. Then you also create things by right. being inspired by what became before you and trying to build on the Absolutely. shoulders of those giants. Absolutely. And then the only Excellent. other thing I'd add, which also we can tie into Fabulous Filipino Brothers, is that look at your own story. I mean, everybody's story is rich. Everybody's family's rich. Right. There's, there's, there's stories in there that is unique to you and only you know from your point of view that is rich. And not just yours, but your like you said, your story. family's yeah, story. Yeah, your family, yeah, yeah, your, his, your family history. Like your own personal, that, yeah. and that's where we got our story. I mean, that's where the Fabulous Filipino Brothers comes from. In creating it, me and Dante were talking like, okay, we want to do this thing with the four brothers. And, um, like he said, we, 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 we know each other's work so well, so we're going to tailor it to each one act as, as far as acting goes. But what's the stories we want to tell? Right. Who are these characters? And so the more and more we talked, we pulled stories from inspired by our parents' yeah. love story. Because it's basically brothers and lovers, so it's kind of like us struggling to find love, keep love, or 
yeah recover love rekindle love. making love so and then it's our parents story <laughs> it's um dante's yeah other relationships so like a lot of i mean that, like that came from yeah. our backyard and then we you know so it's like, inspired we, we so we, so we used our backyard we use our backyard we exactly our family. Yeah. we dug into our chest and we used our so some characters could come from that you know and it's not like directly and exactly the same no no you then you create you create yeah, around sure. it, you know what I mean? Okay, are you guys ready? I have, I have a, we're gonna be here till 7 p.m., guys. <laughs> these oh, kids sorry, are, no, no, no. these sure. kids are loving your responses. We appreciate you sharing. Um, our next student is a creative writing student, and I really, cool. she's got two questions. Helen Estrada. Helen, if you wanna um, raise your hand so we can highlight you, she has a couple questions from a writer's perspective, which I think will be really interesting to hear about. Do you guys see Helen yet? Helen? Not yet. I don't see Helen, but Helen. I think when you speak, it, it pops up here. Yeah, when well, no, you talks, it like... pops up or something. Helen. Hi. Hi. Hello. Oh, Helen, if you, is your camera off? Hi. Okay, there we can hear you better. Is your camera off? Yeah, um, it's... Yeah. Oh, somebody's connecting the audio right there. Okay, so I have two questions. My first question is, um, do you guys have a... Hey, Helen, if you can hear me, I'm gonna ask your questions for you because I think it'll be okay. easier. Can you hear me now? It, a little bit, but you're super choppy. So I'm gonna ask it for you because they're, they're both really great. So she's from the Creative Writing Conservatory, and she said, "I want Hello. to know how do you, as actors and writers, connect with your characters when when you're getting the part? What do you do to make sure you portray the character the way the writer intended?" Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. That's a great question. That's a great question. Now, uh, here's the thing, because we, like you said, now we work on both sides. But as an actor, when you do that, you definitely need to need to fulfill that <laughs> to a certain extent like um and and that's why and that's why people are auditioning people and and seeing and making sure that you're on the, on same, the same page you get the you're on the same page on what what i think this character is and you have the discussions with the director and with the writer in a play the play the playwright is the is it's the, the final team. yeah so in a way you're serving the play in a script in a movie you're also serving the play which is the, the film but it's the director's medium and that director might have a different, so so you meet with the director and the writer and sometimes you're in the room with them and the director has a different point of view of, as, as, the, as the, writer, the writer as you and as and, you as the actor. And, and so it's a much more collaborative thing. And in television, the producer. And in television, it's more of a producer's medium so they will have the final say and they'll gonna hire the person that they think is, right. is doing that. Right, part. so that being said though, uh, Helen, I, which you're a writer, so when you write the script, you're actually the first director. That's your right. time, right? Sure. You write that project in how you see it and um, depending where it ends up and who ends up attaching itself to the project, it, uh, it amalgamates as it goes. Because again, this is a, um, a collaborative. It's a collaborative art. art and but you are the genesis of the story. There's interest yeah. only in it because of the writer's totally. conception and writing. And if you become a very successful writer and a powerful writer, you are, your influence and power and grow. We'll grow. will grow. You'll get right. to a place where like, okay, we gotta do exactly what that writer wants. Sure. Um, like if you're gonna do a Neil Simon. Neil Simon, no. Thing. Neil Simon, you or, can't even change a word. Or, or, Don't change or, a syllable. Or in modern day, the Chicago 7 guy. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, you're not changing. Soderberg. Uh, Soderberg. Uh, you gotta, yeah. Sorkin. Uh, Sorkin. Sorkin. You're not Eric changing Sorkin. his words. Like, uh, and you're speaking a lot of them. You're doing it. You know? Yeah. However, I also feel, even the stuff I write, you know, I write for actors and I have that trust of like, the actor's gonna elevate this. Cause the thing is every, there's an artist at every level of the game right. and, and there's- right. Once you act it, it's written again in the editing room. Yeah, that's what, the, the editor's true. gonna rewrite your whole script anyway in the editing room. So every artist has to kind of like be popping on the right cylinders, but instead of being afraid of it and holding something so tight where it's like you wanna be this dictator over over what you think your vision is, if you kind of collaborate right and you have the trust of each other's artists and you build a place where everyone can actually do their best, it might, again, like I said, even with Zuko, things elevate beyond your wildest dreams. Right. Like, I didn't write it like that, but that's, sure. 
what happened. And right. they talk about that even with uh, Tennessee Williams with, with Marlon Brando. 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 It's yeah. like when you watch Brando and Streetcar, and Streetcar is what kind of changed uh, modern acting, acting forever, Brando, yeah. that plays about Blanche Dubois. But then this dude came in and played a, a pseudo, you know, supporting role and became the role that. And Tennessee said, "I didn't write that." But Tennessee's boy, like, "I didn't write yeah. it like that." But uh, God, this guy did. And so you can so have you a chance for something like that. that. But also, don't get bullied by actors. Also, if you have, exactly. right. you know, exactly. it's all <laughs> communication. <laughs> Excellent. She had one more question yeah, that was really wonderful, um, and I love it because it doesn't have anything to do with acting. She said, "Do you guys have any favorite quotes that you live by?" Any sort of, of famous? Right. You yeah, have do you? a tattoo. So I'm a tattoo. I have a tattoo. I am the master of my fate, the captain of my soul. I've got tattooed on my arm right here. Yeah. But there's a lot of poems and stuff that I'm always yeah, what's a, I mean, kind of, um, I don't know. Angelo, I, I heard something that moved me at the time because I don't know where, I mean, I'm always in weird places, but she was, they yes. were talking about something and, and she said, and I think she was talking to Oprah and they were talking and she was talking about moderation and and about doing things and like, do you celebrate your drink whatever and then Maya Angelou was like I even do moderation in moderation yeah so meaning that even at certain times she had does excess but that she but she does moderation in moderation which to me was that's very pretty, interesting pretty, I like uh, that I'm, I'm gonna take that I'm gonna have to read that quote any um, quotes you live by do you um, know any quotes Dia do uh I don't know any quotes <laughs> off the top of my head <laughs> Um, you can my, borrow the my, moderation my one. That's fine. Is uh, <laughs> if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? You know, like, that's, 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 that's that's basically what I, I tell you. Because it's a funeral and it's sad. That's so why. So celebrate the person's life. Have don't fun be, at that funeral. You don't have to. Yeah, you got to have fun at that's the funeral. If, if you come to my funeral, you better have fun because all I do is celebrate life. I sell. You can find celebration in anything. And so you know, I'm celebrating with you guys today. Just have Love fun. It. All right, do we have time for a couple more before we talk Absolutely. about the film? We got okay. 40 minutes. We're, <laughs> we're going to go to Molly Ray. Molly Ray. She Molly. Her. Hi. Hi, Molly. Where's Waldo? Oh, there she is. Go ahead, Molly. I'm here. I'm in the red stripes. Um, I was wondering, um, how has how has finding a community slash group of actors slash artists i mean like you already are brothers but how has it helped you like keep a perspective throughout your career and how important is that to make friends and a support system in an in industry that really makes it a competition between actors between writers that's a great question it's that's everything great awareness because that's the truth that's everything I mean, it's everything we were lucky because it was built in and we were raised in a way that we got along because not all brothers and siblings do. Right. Um, and we were in competition with each other and like Dante took off first, but mom was always like, you know, support your brother and everything. So it was, you know. But that is everything. That's, that's gonna everything. Get you, that's going to get you through. I mean. But we always been, we're like kind of community builders. It's, it, you should rise together. Right. Right. The, all the clicks that kind of happen on how there's so many. Yeah, if you, if you look at, clicks, at, sure. at like the, the Rat Pack back in the day or in the 80s, the Brat Pack, you always find these groups of friends and like Spielberg, um, Lucas, uh, who, Scorsese. Scorsese. They were all like Decaf. homies. They were all like yeah. friends. And then they. Then that they, was a killer crew. That that's a killer, killer crew. crew. That's a killer crew. Um, but that is everything. You have to find like minded people everything. that are on the same path as you. And that will and pick you up when you're fun, down. Though. It makes it more fun. The journey, success by yourself is cool, but success with others is so much more fun sure. and right. so much, it's so, so much, much greater to celebrate with, to when celebrate times with. and sustain you when times go bad. Right. I mean, but, but also just now's the time, you know, we had a click when we were at OSHA called B Tribe. We yep. did. Shout out we to did. Brian Barricat, Brian Barricat Brooks. 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 And again, they were, we were the B Tribe and, and we performed together and that's kind of what it's about. That's what, yeah. We're coming from a big family, totally. and then. Totally. I mean that. Well, every project that we do, like if we do, and there's more than one Bosco on it, it kind of brings our Bosco flavor, and right. then everybody's always like, "This is a fun set. It's like a family thing." And I mean, that's just the kind of vibe we bring. But um, the other thing, Molly, if you're if you're gonna come into the industry, um, what you realize, you know, it's one of those things that your parents say, like you're judged by the company you keep. True. It's true in this industry because you can you can have a great time in the process of Hollywood if you're surrounded by great people. Mm -hmm. Whether it's your theater company, your production company, your clicker artists, and being supportive, or you can, or this town can eat you alive. And it's right. not the town eating you alive; it's the company that you keep. That, that competition, being jealous of each other, chopping yeah. each other down, not really supporting each other, not really wanting to see each other win, or someone's sure. win is killing you. Yeah, I mean. This town, the people that stay with 
a mental health, a, a healthy mental health is it's directly it's connected with the, the company around, and the yeah. artists that you're keeping. And so, yeah, we're the same way. It's like if like the people that gravitate towards you and you gravitate towards you, keep it healthy, mm-hmm. keep it. It's it's gonna be the ever it's changing. Every, it's, it's everything. everything. It's mean, everything. Yeah. And like, cherish our, true our friendships. Nephew, our nephew, he just did one of these with his school. And they had Francis Ford Coppola because one of his uh, his his best his, friend his is best friend is that's his uncle his great uncle and so Francis's main thing to these kids was your friends take care of your friends it's like especially during this time you realize how important yeah 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 especially right like he kept coming back quarantine. to it. your friends are the most important thing your family and your friends take it's care curious. of your relationships that's the most important thing I mean and this is this is the thing Molly we have our friends in our clique that we've been together we all studied together 20 plus years together uh we've all had various ups and downs in our career but we're 30 years deep in the industry and it's like we all applaud the great things that happen your fame your star meter goes up and down that's just how the industry happens but check it we know each other we know who's good we know how good we don't value each other by the paychecks or how right. or your how last you film yeah, did right, right. or what job you booked. We do value as artists. I mean, you, right. you still got to be a legit actor. You still, we still value each other as artists, but we don't judge each other on where your, on your stock is, yeah. in, where your stock is at any given time. But those are the people that are forever got Supporting, each other's back. Yeah. That's, yeah. you know, we're not forties. like, that's the most important. That's, no, but it, I mean, it's like back. that even too, like with uh, our, our nephew, Jaden, you know, yeah. he's a big star, Jaden Martell. Um, but to us, he's just Jaden. And we he comes over and he plays with the kids and we rough house and we keep him on a level too. You know what I mean? You got to, your, your people just. But he has his click. He's yeah, like, you got your click. click you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Their... But you need, you just need to, you, find, yeah. you need to find, find people your that, tribe. that, find your that, tribe. Uh, that love you for you and not anything else but love you as a person and are willing to support you and you support them that's great advice i really like that thanks molly for asking those questions welcome um next we have ryan ryan Choi. ryan Choi. all right so you guys talk about a lot about other inspirations like mako i know who mako is he did a lot of great work on not only like avatar but i think uh samurai jack yeah, I think yeah. it did a lot of good work on Samurai Jack as a coup. But other than that, um, are there any like other artists or actors that you really like? I mean, have you ever been surprised by someone else's work or like you've been inspired to do something because of them? Well, other than Mako, because you already told us about him. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. And in fact, uh, since you talk a lot about making an impression on people, who has made the memorable, the most memorable impression on you? Good question. Okay. Good question. That's a great question. Um, Brian. I mean, we, we, I, we, we study we had, a lot we of were, the actors. We were crazy. We, we, was, like, we um, had tons of inspiration. I mean, I mean, first of all, we were chasing Brando, yeah. Pacino, and De Niro, yes. Paul Brothers, Bill Early, Pino. I think I'm, like, that's how we... We were chasing all the actors. Like, we were chasing we Marlon Brando, Daniel Day-Lewis, Day James Dean, Dean, Dustin Hoffman, I mean, um, James like, Dean. Stuff, James Cagney. Little, little thing they do, like, uh, and when we say we're studying them, we're watching all their movies. We're reading Betty books. Davis, I mean, I mean Betty Davis. The women too. Betty Davis, Barbara Stanwyck. Bar- uh, these are these are classic, movie, classic stars movie stars. Meryl from Street, the fifties, the forties. That, that we were chasing. Yeah, yeah. Still are chasing. We're them. chasing them. And, and then had, as through the years, and more we, brilliant actors come around and actresses, you know. And we've had like the good Bruce fortune Lee, to work, uh, uh, Bruce Lee, to work with some of these guys. You know, I got to work with Dustin Hoffman, and when I work with Hoffman, you know, he's dude. This guy is like. Well, you know, he's one in the seventies. He's one of the guys on the Mount Rushmore of of seventies actors, character actors that became leading men that changed again, changed the industry of how, forever. We're talking about Hoffman, Pacino, De Niro, uh, you know, probably yeah, you know. Jack Nicholson. And so I would read his books, talk to him about Kramer versus Kramer, and, and talk to him about Lenny, talk to him about Midnight Cowboy, and yeah, surprise you. They always surprise you uh, to sit there and have the wherewithal, right? When I did Hook, and you were fifteen, uh, at and the I time. was fifteen, but I was a serious actor studying. And I tell young artists, "You guys are gonna work. You guys are gonna work. Someone here is gonna do something big. You're gonna be on the set with really heavy hitters, people that you may look up to, may not look up to, may not understand the work. But you gotta have the wherewithal to, to know when you're in the presence of greatness. When you're in the presence of greatness, I would just show up at the set 
my days off when I wasn't being paid to be on the set just to sit like right next to I can look at Steven Spielberg direct uh -huh. and see what yeah, he's doing sure. watch Dustin Hoffman work playing Captain Hook watch Rob, the legendary Robin Williams sit there and watch him improv and, and kind of take it in and was I impressed I was thoroughly impressed it's mm -hmm. like it's kind of like having the um just the good fortune to be sitting there to watch Picasso paint or right. to be in a, a concert hall to see Mozart conduct a symphony. And so tell them about how you booked the job. Because you spoke the same language as, yeah, as Spielberg. I sat, when I sat down with Steven Spielberg, like he didn't even audition for him. He just wanted to talk to me about a character. And we started talking about Ratso Rizzo from Midnight Cowboy. And I'm a 15 year old kid talking about playing another street urchin character. And we just were talking about acting. And then then he ended up offering me the role. Which is amazing because you because he he was talking to an actor, we, not yeah, just a kid. We speak the same language, so I mean, you're saying who else impresses you know us or me? Mm -hmm. I mean, we definitely go back and study all those guys that impressed us. But that being said, there's so many people that I'm impressed with and I'm impacted with in real time. Like I said, yeah. like reading, even meeting someone new is like. Kev Jumba, I was so impacted by what he was doing, even digitally, in where digital he made the me digital world. Yeah, yeah, like sure, sure, flip sure, on sure. what I was doing. Right. And then, right. you know, there's so many actors and and whatnot that that really, like I said, Mako. I mean, I, I get to act with some of the best voice actors in the world, and sitting down and watching Mark Hamill work is phenomenal. Phil Lamar, mm -hmm. uh, John DiMaggio, and I, I just feel like I'm so fortunate to to act alongside them, but to see the characters they build is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thanks, Ryan, for the question. Um, next, I have Scott Becker. Scott has a question for Scott, you guys. Hi, Scott, I found you? Scott early. Scott. There you go. What's up, Scott? Hi, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. OK, cool. Um, I just wanted to ask, you know, as a young actor, I intend on working uh, in the industry. Um, what sort of um, advice would you have? Like, what are those first steps that would be best to take in order to get a good start, like a good head start on a career in the industry? So where are you at now? Like, um, so, um, you say at, yes. <laughs> well, at this point, I've I've done like a few like little auditions and stuff. I, I'm I'm basically like starting from okay. scratch, kind of uh, like. So my question is just like from from there, what would you say like? To, to like when you're starting to build the foundation of you know a career working like what are the best first steps that could be taken to to get there right mm -hmm. so first of all you know you're in a good place because it always starts with Absolutely. education and foundation of like getting good at what you do or getting good and so i think you're on the path of that and then when you talk about going into the industry you know you you first start out and you realize you're in this whole kind of like place of uh you know, you say non-existent, non yeah. like you don't exist in the industry. And, and we've all been there. And you're saying, how do I exist, right? And so how you do that is you do anything you can at first. You, you, you get people to notice you. What does that mean? That means doing short Visual films, content. showcases, any content now online. There's people that coming in, you know, you think you're going to Hollywood alone. These kids are coming with 10,000, 100,000 TikTok followers with them that's helping them open doors for the room. The reality is, you do anything to exist, which will hopefully get you an agent, manager, get producers, cast and directors to see you. Uh, when we started out, it was theater pieces, doing theater, doing showcase theaters. Um, now it's it could be anything. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Now um, now it could be all from your phone. Now it you know? could be you know kids that did something interesting. And I, I know a lot of people look down on, on social media, right? They're like, oh, this, this, and that. And I go, this is the deal. It's just another form of our entertainment. And it does matter. It doesn't, I tell young, when I, I talk a lot with some of the biggest content creators out there that want to take the jump into, into traditional media. And I, I tell them, you know, it means everything and nothing all at the same time. It means everything because the world has changed. It, producers, agents, managers, they'll lie to you if they say they're not looking at your social feeds. They are. If you are doing something on there and you're garnering attention of, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, a million people, you're doing something because we're storytellers and you understand what you guys, what your generation is doing that you're not even realizing is you guys are telling stories through pictures, through 10 second videos, through minute videos. And the ones that are really good at it are mastering 
storytelling on that medium. Mm -hmm. And that will translate if they want, if they can connect with the right people into the traditional media. But I just go back to saying, what do you got to do? You have to be seen by the right people. You have to figure out how to do that. And that comes from all these different media pl places and there's places to go meet casting directors, meet agents. You want, you want to get represented, obviously. You want to get an agent, you want to get a manager, you want casting directors to know who you are. And there is a process that, that, that happens. I know OSHA offers a thing, especially for seniors with their um, showcase senior showcase. Like and that's sure. a, one of the big first steps to kind of get out in front of the first degree of casting directors and agents and managers. You do that and then after that step, there's other things like that going on in the city. But reality is social media is part of it. And it's not about having all the numbers in the world, but it's also about people creating content that is interesting to other writers, producers, every we, we do we do look at it. It means something. I have Thank another you. student that sorry, has I mean, a question. I Oh, sorry. I'm in Actors Showcase this year, by the way. I'm, I'm doing Actors Showcase, so that's oh, right cool, on. man. Good luck. Right Good on, luck man. on the showcase. Awesome, Thank Scott. Thank you. I have another student who actually has a social media question, so I think it's a good tie-in. Um, so, Remy, if you want to raise your hand, Remy, you can ask your question oh, regarding right. social media. Hi, Remy. Hi. Um, I just wanted to ask, like, I know you guys talked about social media a little bit earlier and how, like, casting directors and people, like, look at your social media. Uh, I I do, like, Twitch and stuff like that and YouTube and I just wanted to know, like, what's the attitude? I just want to get an insider perspective. Like, what's the attitude in Hollywood towards people that do that kind of thing? Like, can those people really build themselves up just through that and then become actors? Is that like feasible? That's, that's well, my he, question. he's got he's got Twitch deals and, and all that stuff. Um, it's all feasible. I mean, I do Twitch. I have a Twitch channel. I have TikTok. I have like, I have everything. And I I mean, and, and, yeah. and that's another. I mean, and again, I was a part of Maker Studios. Had a deal maker series, which was the first MCN, and they they really kind of put YouTube on the map. And so I deal a lot with with content creators, and I deal a lot, you know. And it's also branding deals, and there's a lot of money that comes through that era, that area, right? Um, it's all good. Like we all do it. We we all we all do everything. That's just the way the, the industry is now. If you can kind of create yeah. through any medium, that's fine. If you could scale it, that's even a better thing to kind of walk in the room with. But can you cross over into traditional media? You got to be good. That's you gotta actually, get, you got to get good. That's on you. Yeah. Like that's on the person. It, it's not a blanket. Like they can do it. The reality is we've all been trying, not just my company, all, all these companies have been trying to find the YouTubers or whatnot that can cross into traditional media in a mm -hmm. way. And, and we yeah. haven't, no one's really done it. Correct. I still have a lot of hope for a lot of cats, and we're doing a lot of vehicles. Who who can make that jump over? Yeah, right. I mean, when well, you look but at, but there is not well, there is not a negative stare. Uh, there's not no, a negative. No, there's not. There's, no, not, a there's not a negative thing on. Stigma. We're all trying okay. to get it done. I if mean, it's anything, almost everybody's trying to find the the, the way to connect. To yeah. The, like, how can we stigma. turn this person? But it's always about the per. Again, it goes back to you. Like, is that person? Can that person? You know, the biggest Twitchers, the biggest uh, YouTubers can can we can they do that on film problem is when they're starting to act they can't bring themselves yeah. out to really show themselves on film or we can't get the right project it's it's, it's what we're doing in filmmaking is al you know it's like alchemy sure. like we're all trying to make gold out of things and there's no scientific way to do it uh we can do it but if you're a great twitcher and you garner an audience there no one's right down you'll, on you. you'll probably get a shot before get a shot. other people if you have enough eyeballs on you you know right. they're gonna say a lot of people know who she is so let's give her a shot then it's up to you to to bring it when you have it when you have that shot you know yeah um, there's with, nothing stopping you though there's no there's no yeah. negative look i don't i don't do much social media but you know i don't hate on it but you know i maybe i should maybe i should I don't know. <laughs> All right, thank you. Remy, did that answer your question? Good, awesome. Um, do you guys wanna continue with questions? You wanna yeah, take a little, little minute to talk really about good. the movie? Are you good? Okay, um, we're gonna go to Lisa Ordonez. Lisa, there's a question her. about the pandemic and, and your work and stuff, so yeah. I'm interested. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Lisa. Hi guys. Um, firstly, I just wanted to say it means a lot hearing from you because I'm Filipino too, so I just hey. love you and everything. Yeah, um, so my question was, how has the pandemic like affected you working with your artistic expression and like has it impacted you in positive and negative ways and how? Mm -hmm. Totally. It's impacted the world and we're, we're yeah. right along. Yeah. 
Well, we, I mean, you did a lot of the post-production during the pandemic. Yeah, I so was lucky with our film, Fabulous Filipino Brothers, that we shot everything before the pandemic. And so we had to actually edit a lot of it during the whole lockdown. And so we did a lot of remote editing and great with technology. Now we were able to do that. But uh, it's not the same as being in the editing bay with no, the editor. Sure. But uh, but beyond that, I think, you know, this was a time for us to collectively check in with ourselves. Yeah. I mean, we had uh, yeah. all yes, had good time, days and, and bad days. Time check out. <laughs> and at times <laughs> check out. It's been it has been it's rough. I mean. Yeah. I mean, on a strictly, I mean, we were lucky too because we have a big family and we we all stayed in a pod. And we were able to shoot a couple commercials together yeah. as a family, our parents and everybody included, because we were in that pod. And, and, and so that was lucky. But we also, even that. before even that, our, we have an 11-year-old niece who just started directing commercials. And she was like, I have actors. And then she started directing she started everybody directing in commercials, and commercials like that. that she would just post just because she wanted to be creative. Do you know what I mean? Um, which and was very Geico, cool. And then Geico was like, we want to post and then commercial. Yeah, and then Geico was like, can we post that? And then, so she got paid to be a director. Um, uh, it, 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 it just, but you find, you find different ways to work during this crazy quarantine, you know, um, when, uh, during this quarantine, I mean, there's a lot of self-reflection and, and finding out what means the most to you and whether it be family, friends, and some people don't mean as much. And so you kind of cut them out and, you know, um, yeah, he's like. Yeah, I mean, you have to. You know, no, it's just so I think COVID has impacted all of us. But I think hopefully it also, in a weird way, has kind of like brought us to a place collectively. I mean, and this is me thinking as an artist, I go, at least we've all went through this thing together. And we also have this really acute feeling with the masks and with everything spreading. You're, we're very cautious of how things that we do affect everybody else in the world like yeah. it, there's something we do is going to affect everything else in the world. i'm so i'm so interested artistically thinking how this whole pandemic and something that has impacted all of us look at us we're here on a friggin zoom how that's going to affect the art in the next 10 years what you guys are going to write what is this what's the long-term kind of storytelling is going to go on with this whole thing we're doing so i'm i'm fascinated we just continue to work like everybody else but it's gonna it's gonna impact all of us somewhat in some way artistically thank you thank you thanks lisa for your question um next i have fox fox i don't know is your last name maso meso i'm going to pronounce it wrong i'm very sorry but i can do fox hey fox what's up fox, what's up, fox? Hey. damn that's cool i wish my name was fox <laughs> <laughs> i get that a lot uh i just want to i just want to ask um we've been talking a lot about like really sorts of like cool and positive things you guys have been doing, but I kind of want to know what your guys' like biggest regrets so far in show business. That's, um, that's pretty okay. heavy. That's, that's heavy, Fox. Fox. You're, gonna, you're, trying, you're, trying, you're trying to open Pandora's box up in here. Yeah. Well, we do, but we did have so, a segment that we didn't get to in our, in our opening about the dark side of when you get into the business, there are pitfalls that can happen. And I know there's yeah. one, I mean, there, you know, we, we didn't get into it. Yeah, so, I don't mind, yeah. I don't mind getting into, get into it. it a little bit Let's just jump it into it a little bit because the reality... It's, it's a caution that you guys should know too. Yes, like, absolutely. So we did study for 20 years and um, outside of OSHA, we studied for 20 years and with the same teacher. And what started off as a, a beautiful and like taught us how to act and taught positive. us positive and, and taught us how to Furby, view the world artist, and all that stuff. Development but because whatever. of this town and the kind of town it is, People take advantage of that, you know. Um, so you, there's a lot of there's a lot of people in this town that's just trying to sell your soul so they can make a quick buck or or you know manipulate you for their own thing. Um, and we fell victim to that for for a long time. Um, yeah, and I wrote about it in my book. He there's, touched on it. I would have went deeper. I know, but there's but he's a nice stories guy. that are you know you got. This is the thing. This is the temp. This is. This is Hollywood, y'all. This is, you know, this is Hollywood. This is uh, everything. It's sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's what this town is. I mean, the reason why people don't, you know, a lot of time parents and loved ones don't want you to get into the business, not only because of the heartbreak, because of the madness of what this town can be. You can get caught and up into some, the success yeah. of this town 
you're going to have the highest highs you're going to have the lowest lows and this is where support system comes this is where in. support systems come in and and it, and it and it happened always but not everything is all good and not everything is all bad that's life but that's when you're dealing with hollywood the fame and the money and the success doesn't actually change who you are it actually magnifies who you are and what you are so um so I, I say that because it's like if you're if you're this kind of person, it's like you get more money, more fame, you're just gonna do that more. If you're a giving kind of person, you can give to more people. You'd be like Oprah. You know what I'm saying? If you're petty and you're scared of others, and then you're that fame, and then it's gonna take you down the dark road, and that can lead to drugs, alcohol. We've all seen it happen. We've seen it happen personally with our friends of ours. Friends die. Things happen with us. We had, you know, we got into a situation we didn't talk to our parents for seven years. Yes. in the guides of what we were because doing we were working. on our path of our career and you and know. so that for for a family especially for our family our filipino family that's a very dark time in our life where we really pulled away from certain people due to other things we were chasing other influences on our you know and so i mean and... i guess we, just as you guys are talking as young artists a lot of you guys are going to jump in this industry different facets of the industry yo this is it's great there's a yeah. lot of amazing things we are positive we're 35 years deep and we and we do spread love and positivity with it, but don't get it twisted. There are this industry, like all things in life, but like again, this magnifies it. Will test you on who you think you are, what you think you were raised at, what your value system is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what kind of friends you are, what kind of lover you are. All the temptations will be there. You will not be perfect. You will fail. I have failed. You will have times where you are the king of the world you have times where you are the dirt like you totally failed everyone you love and and these things happen that's that's hollywood i mean i can't put it any yeah. other way it's like this is not a joke yeah. every movie you watched about um about any hollywood star right e true hollywood story <laughs> if you're in this industry for any time there any period of time you last have years, 10 years more there'll be tribulations you have you are going to live your own E true Hollywood story, no matter what your success is or whatnot. That's just how this town works. Yeah. That's why we say, if you're going to live it, live it to the fullest, but be surrounded by good people. That's a be good people for the exactly. people you're surrounding. Get with a click, have each other's back. You know, you can die. I mean, that's the reality. I mean, I don't want to scare anybody, but that I've, we've seen it happen. You know, you get caught up in and this is not just like because we're artists. We're sensitive people. Artists are sensitive. You put yourself out there and you want to be like, you know, accepted. So you could put yourself out there to the wrong person and that wrong person accepts you and can and use, then, you know, use their power and then they abuse their that, power. Yeah. So you but need to be there for your friends and family. Yes. And your chosen right. family. So be there for right. them. And, uh, and, and, if, and if those friends and family so are I don't giving know. you like giving you warnings like it seems like this thing is not empowering you as it should be i mean listen to them like the people yeah. that you love listen to them and take heed yeah because don't have an ego don't have don't have so much ego about like oh i chose this so i'm gonna go do this no take a step back go okay take myself out of it let me look at the situation from their side and say oh yeah oh i can see what's happening and you know pe people will look out for you then you have to heed their advice right Fox, Fox, you just asked that dark. Yes, that's thanks, Fox. I, I'm going to turn it around. Question, Fox, Fox, that was a, a great question. I've got Isabella Ho up next, and she's got a good question that I think will bring us bring us full circle back to the, the okay, funny, cool. happy, okay. maybe. Okay. I thought that was a great question, Fox. Thank like you. It. No, that's great. Isabella, are you ready? Yeah. Um. Hello. I don't hello. know. Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, there, there you are. What's yeah. up? Hi. <laughs> Nice. Uh, my question was basically the opposite of that saying um what is like the funniest or like the best moment you guys had during your acting experiences or directing experiences it's like the entire like business in okay. general yeah well i mean um one of the best things i mean we could i could talk only because it's the most recent too is is shooting this family i mean this this film our, our, movie, our family our movie now we got to um our mom and dad play our mom and dad in the film too which was so come full talk about coming full circle i mean our very mom, meta film our mom was kind of like responsible for us being artists and actors i mean she's the one who really put in the hard work drove us down here took us to all the auditions every took us out. so then 
she starts to become an actress. And yep. Dante's directing her in this movie. We wrote this part for her. So being on set and watching her act and the thing it was very emotional and very it's just, it's just like a, a beautiful thing. I mean, well, that whole wonderful. movie because we go back to our old hometown where we grew up up in north and northern California, and so all of our elders that are you know that helped raise us are also in the film. Um, all yeah. of our aunts and uncles, well not all, but you know special many. Feeling. So it's a very special feeling. So after all of our whole rat race of Hollywood to now come back and do this together with our community up there. And that has to be one of the highlights of our, you know. Yeah, and then you know, but also go, our go individual careers. To, go, you go back to like when you first get on like a big set, you know, because like we're all here, we all have dreams. You know, you're actors, you're young actors, and there's things that you want. You know, we watch movies, and there's a lot of things we want to do, mm -hmm. and then you wind up on a set, and like you know, you have the big trailer. Yeah, and there's people yeah, asking well, you like what it. you want for breakfast. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. I take that. I get the grilled cheese with the bacon. Can you make the bacon crispy? They're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they bring you, you know, you, you're in the makeup trailer and they're bringing you the bacon. And you're just, you're kind of tripping in your mind. Like you're trying to be cool. But then when the first time you get on the set and there's all the lights are there. It, it is, a, it's, and, it's pretty uh, amazing. Yeah. It's an amazing moment. Yeah. Like I, just a moment to go, you know, you did it. Like for greater or less, whatever is going to happen. Like you're here today. That feeling, there is a great feeling about um a giddiness like a giddiness. I, it comes over me sometimes yeah like I, I might have a laughing fit i remember shooting a scene with uh ron howard's mom in a film i did and we were doing a scene together and I, it was just it you, sometimes you just get you're just so excited because all the work that you guys are doing now and all the work that we've done throughout and you're on set and you're actually doing it and it just makes you feel good that you're doing it so sometimes it's just, it just hits you at certain moments it's like right this is my life like this yeah. is what i i uh, this is what i do it, also building building relationships with other people on like projects I, I shot a series called city guys for five five seasons we did 105 episodes so those people became my family you know and uh i mean then it was just like a family like then you just goof off and you're just like, having fun and but we're working and we're creating and it was such a great time i was in the early 20s um mm -hmm. and then one good feeling about isabel's like when we were talking about because we we're big on craft and, and 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 getting your craft together is uh when you you know you're all we're all tennis players this is the, the set in acting becomes almost like a kung fu movie everybody got their own styles and come to set but also there are some people that are more actors and some people are just more personalities just kind of doing the, the lines and stuff and that's all good like you could be a big star and not really an actor you're just uh, you know a popular actor but then <laughs> when you get on the set and you're an actor and there's another actor on the set like i'm talking like cats that like us that have been training our whole lives that we got ideas it's like all of a sudden the game changes it's like mm. like yeah. all of a sudden you can feel that they could when feel an it actor then. like it happened a few times when I, when I first acted with Antonio Banderas it was like and even the director came to me afterwards it's like it changed like it all changed because when an actor sees another actor you know your tennis changes because I was acting because as an actor you can only act with who you're acting with you know what I'm saying and that's how the, your thing goes but then if you get to on a set or get into a scene with an actor, your whole thing happens, changes. Right. It happened right. too when I when I was doing CSI Man with David Cruz, I was just doing a small scene with him. But you know, he's such a crazy actor. And as yeah. soon as we did the scene one time, he goes, hold up, hold up, let's do this again. You know, yeah, when Maria, Maria Bell is like, hold on a second, yeah. well, you're good, you're doing something else. It's changes it yeah. always feels it good because you run into other actors and we have a special right. unspoken kind of relation. We may not even acknowledge it in the moment, but when you run to other actors you change it changes because you're seeing what they're doing right. they're seeing what you're doing each take it's a different conversation happening through the craft and you don't, and, and, don't and care what the director's doing sometimes like exactly. we're doing something else and that's what i mean and that's great and it's fun but we're actors and sometimes we indulge and I know. Sometimes, oh, yeah, yeah. You sometimes, sometimes back to the other question that doesn't serve the story yeah so writers yes. and, the, and the director redirecting like, i'm what like what are you doing dude say you're in line and let me this <laughs> stop, moment is going on stop. too long you like, are doing happens. too much that happens. but i mean those are great Get great, great feeling moments where yeah. you, you get to actually but also what is great do too. everything. You get to do stuff that we were actually been learning for years. All the stuff you got to train, you actually get to do it. That feeling is through it's the, the roof. I mean, you know what's a great another feeling? It's like when you have your support system and then they do great work and then you're watching and you go, they did it. They right. you know, you, you're so proud of them. That's true. For, for you're like, ooh, are they going to get there? And they're like, oh my gosh, they are killing this role right now. And I, uh, I, being a I'm proud gonna... friend. Interject. Can we try and squeeze two more in? Okay, okay, awesome. So 
Th you. This question, I'm going to have Lily Ochoa raise her hand. We'll spotlight her. I, I had about six different students ask the same question, so it'll get answered, which is great. Lily, if you're there, go ahead. Hi, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. we can hear you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so um, in terms of what you spoke about a few questions ago, um, like high times and low times in Hollywood and such, um, mm -hmm. when you hit a low point in your career and it seems like you aren't getting as like jobs at all and stuff um what can you do to stay optimistic and keep going until you hit that pot of gold again yeah good question because the, the, the way to survive in this town is not just working because we all know how to live when we're working the ones who actually can survive for years who can figure out how to live life in between the gigs. sure because as an actor you're unemployed or, or about, about to, to be unemployed. unemployed i mean that's that's the life of an actor i mean that's how it is and so my remedy always has been and people always say like you guys are always doing something whether you guys are out there seeing it or not in between gigs we're i'm always producing something i'm like for me creativity has been the thing that just kind of kept me going creating things like the poetry lounge creating, you know, doing, producing plays, writing plays, um, writing songs, being in the studio, uh, it'll, you know, photography, like anything uh, that, that sustains that you sustains as me a creatively, artist, as a, yes, you know, right. it's like whatever, you know. And sometimes that means getting away from everything, going right. to the beach by yourself and just listening to the waves and just listen to your inner monologue and like, maybe you'll find some peace, you know, um, because nothing, Hollywood can't give you peace. You have to find peace within yourself. Do you know what I mean? And um, you know, you just can't. You can't live and die for the job. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, we all want to work, and you, and and hopefully, and you will work, and hopefully, work a lot. But that's can't be the sole the, thing with that, that controls your mental mind. health because sure. no. you you can't let the industry control your mental health, or, and we're going to be all basket cases. So, what you can do is you remember that you're a creator. You're creative create when the dark the, when i feel like i can't say anything i can write a poem i can read a book i can watch Sing a movie. song i just force myself to create read a, something read a story i mean yeah and it goes back to again even if it's creating something bad the people who are around you i mean it goes back to that right. again uh, that's very uh, you gotta lean it's on sustaining people. yeah you gotta lean on on the people that you choose to be around you you know and, and your loved ones yeah so well, thanks creative. guys that's a great answer thanks lily i know other people asked that same question um next i have siblings together i think olivia and oh. julia hey. Hey. are you guys together yep we, i see them okay awesome they have two questions for you guys oh there they are hey. perfect hi i'm julia um hi. my question was do you believe that being an artist or actor and having to play different characters and create different characters has made you more empathetic and therefore a better listener and friend and better able to put yourself in other people's shoes. Ooh, I hope so. I really do. I mean, I mean that that's a great question. And I hope it I hope yeah. it has. I mean, that's kind of like a lifelong journey as well, too, to, to continue to to become more empathetic and, and more because I mean, like we said, you're stuck with the characters, characters stuck with you, you're stuck with everything that you write comes from your point of view. And so, yeah, I mean, it totally, it totally, it has to, because when you're writing the thing, you're writing it from your a point female point of, point of view, a male point of view, whether it be transgender, whatever. So you're actually, if you're, if you're doing it in a way that's personal, in a way that, that, that's coming from you really, and you're really going after it, then, then it, 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 it has to. And at least the way that I work, if I'm writing or if I'm, working on a role or something it's always teaching me something i'm always looking for looking for the thing in it that that the lesson that 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 yeah. i'm meant to learn at this point in time always yeah. always absolutely um yeah I, I agree it's uh i i've traveled a lot and um well i always say that like for our film here you have you have four male leads that are of filipino descent and they're four different people so you get to see that like a lot of times we're not shown we're like oh that's the asian friend that's the black friend that's that no no no. we have full rounded characters and i feel like if you could walk a mile in my shoes then you could figure out who i am but and also with creating characters and studying like that you're like you do get empathetic to to other people because you have to be because you got to find out what makes that person tick or what makes that character tick you know um and you have to not judge it but just like okay 
And now I, I, I know where you're coming from and I feel yeah. you, you know what I mean? There's a reason for everything I always feel like. Even, you know, even the most mundane, crazy job, I, if I end up doing it, I, uh, I have to ask myself, like, why am I doing this? Why has the universe put this in front of me? Even if it's just to have patience that day sure. or laugh sure. at myself. Sure. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, you know. I love it. Can, can Olivia ask her question as yeah, well? Do it. Okay, yes. Olivia, go ahead. Um, along your journey as an actor and a producer, how or when did it become so important to express Asian representation? Yeah, uh, I missed it. What was it? When when did it happen? When did it become Along important to express Asian representation? It was kind of uh, gradually go, coming into this industry. I never thought of myself as an Asian actor, Asian artist. Just like I was like any other. We were all like any other artist. Just right. like trying to keep your boat afloat in this industry. But as you kind of grow up in it and you see the other things that are happening and the other injustices that are happening, and that you have a platform to help speak on it, and you are Asian. Sure. Uh, it got to a point where I was like. How Let can me you just, not? How can you not? How can I not mm-hmm. do yeah. this? If I'm going to create something, I, I think we need this. I think if I can help out the next generation, these cats, let me do something for it. There are stories that I want to tell that are personal to me that are not being funded by the studio right. system or the mainstream system. Yeah. If I have the means to do it, why don't I? I think I should do it. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's just, it's just a process. I think as an artist that we all go through that. There comes a time where things get really personal to you and, and these are the stories I want to tell from this perspective because what you realize, what I realize, right, is um, roles I played, roles they play, all, almost all the roles that you've seen play in Hollywood for the last hundred years, like up until recently, like 99% of them were all written from the perspective of a white male, like period, no matter a male, female, Asian, and and there's nothing, it's not, that's not racist. That's just how the business was built. And there's nothing actually wrong with that. The only thing wrong with that is that it was 99% as opposed to a very small percent of other perspectives. And when we're doing art, it's a conversation. There may be some problems I have with your perspective of what you're doing, but then I have to do some stuff from my story, from my point of view, uh, Asians, Latinos, African-American women, trans, let's hear the story from their Point of view and, and consequently there may be a white male that we talk about from our perspective that you may have a problem with which doesn't make anything false it means it's conversation but the problem is the conversation has been one-sided for so long and once i had that kind of like you know awareness awareness mm-hmm. i was like okay well then i gotta help bring voices in that are sure. going to help uh the conversation of art, art and elevate art to the next wherever we're going that's a a fabulous transition guys to talk about your movie real quickly before we have to let the students go and we don't want to take up any more of your time how can our students see your movie when is it coming out Tell us all those things. Well, the okay. movie's coming out this Tuesday. It's called Fabulous Film. Well, it's not coming out. March it's, it's premiering out. at South by Southwest. It's not actually coming it's not out. Coming out. Because <laughs> it's, it's a premiere at the festival. It's premiering so it's not... at the festival. But if you are a SAG member, which I'm sure some of y'all, you might be able to watch a sneak peek of it tomorrow. Uh, you check with Screen Actors Guild because they're going to screening for it. Um, An but actual release date, we don't know yet. Actual release date, we don't know yet. But you can check out this, the trailer that we, we got you. and and follow the film, uh, Fabulous Filipino Brothers. Hopefully we'll get a distribution deal and it'll be out either right, on a streaming platform right. or in a theater. Yeah, follow us on Instagram. Out. You'll find out. All that. Uh, we can put the trailer link back in the chat um, now. Eric, if you wouldn't mind doing that, I know some students came in later and then that way they could access it. Um, that would be great because it's a, it's a wonderful trailer and I hope we can support you guys in that endeavor. Um, so lastly, I had not exaggerating, at least a dozen students ask me if maybe you could indulge us, Dante, and give us your favorite Zuko dialogue moment. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I'd be doing it. I'm more a Rufio girl, but I'm just saying these students, I mean, I'm being harassed in this chat. Give us People waited two hours. They were like, okay, 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 whatever, guys. All right. Dante. Hello. Zuko here. And he goes like that. <laughs> no, but I'm really, I just do a quick, sometimes I do quick poems for uh, my avatar. Yeah, stuff. give her an avatar poem. So, yeah, give her my avatar um, poem. A poem called Honor for something lost or misplaced, etched into your consciousness like a scar upon your face. This honor that you chase isn't always what you thought. Matter of fact, the fact that you always had it is the very reason why you set out to prove its existence from the start. Ta Fei Fung. So small, but so strong. She moves mountains. Next time I go on a life-changing adventure, you're invited to come along. A poem for my friend who doesn't even bend, puts his heart as big as the rest of them. 
Plus, he always has my back, makes me laugh because he's funny. And when his girlfriend turned into the moon, all I could say was, that's rough, buddy. And then one last poem for, uh, you know, for Katara. <laughs> uh, sometimes the feeling of what could have been is so much stronger than what actually happened because the memory of perfection lasts longer. And even though we didn't end up together, it'll never change the fact that you changed my life forever. Sotara, Sotara. Nice. That's it. Well, that's a great way to end this session. Um, students, I know they can see a lot of you. We can. If you wouldn't mind giving round of applause, snaps, oh, we all Thank the you. things we'll see you to these Thank gentlemen. Thank you so much for having us. Thank you. This Thank is you so wonderful. Much. Thank you so much so for sharing. Cool. Ralph, thanks for bringing us back Ralph, home to OSHA. Thank you. Thank you.